can support us completed novel house in link below clip. Thank you for coming and love the sharing story chapter 641 guest coaches list. In the afternoon. After ending Grandma Jong's call, Jong Yi made a few calls in a row after that. Through the management agency, he found the agent before finally reaching the intended party after much trouble. After he made the intention of the call clear, Zhong Yi arranged to meet up with the person and drove over immediately. In a district. In a villa. He followed the address and found his way here. Upon arrival, he saw the doors to the villa already opened and the male and female owners had both spotted Zhong Yi approaching. They came out immediately to welcome him. Teacher Zhong. The man waved at him. The woman smiled and said, we were still thinking of suggesting a more centralized place to meet. Was it hard to find this place? Zhong Yi smiled and shook their hands. He said, it's best to discuss this in the privacy of your home since it is easier to speak there. There are people everywhere outside and it's not so convenient to talk about business. Once I had a meeting with someone at a coffee house and the staff and guests there were all busy taking pictures and creating a constant shutter sound with their cameras. Some of the young people were even more aggressive, coming up to our table to take photos of me up close. That really overwhelmed me, so how do you suppose we can talk about any business there at all? The man laughed and said, Teacher Jong, please come in. The three of them went into the villa. The woman went to the kitchen and came out with some tea. Old Chen and I have both heard of Zhong Yi's reputable name so much and we've always been paying attention to your news. I really like the songs you wrote and have been hoping to meet you so that we could talk. Zhong Yi smiled and said, me too. The heroic couple one of the singing industry, I've heard about the both of you for a long time now. The man was taken aback and asked, what is the heroic couple? The woman laughed, we even have such a nickname. Where did it come from? Zhong Yi got a little nervous, knowing that it was a slip of tongue. There was no such thing as the return of the Condor heroes in this world, so he quickly added, it's just a description for an ideal couple, ha ha. The man said with a smile, what ideal? We also argue on a daily basis. Zhong Yi said, oh, but that's not how they said it on television. The man laughed heartily and replied, if it's a television program, of course it will be slightly exaggerated to make us sound better. In our daily lives, which couple does not have their quarrels? The woman added, if the argument gets too heated, we might even get physical. If it were with other industry outsiders or the media, they would surely not say that much. However, since Zhong Yi was also an industry insider and the three of them were similar in popularity with all of them being B-listers, together with the fact that they had no conflict of interests, their conversation was naturally also much more light-hearted. The man was Chen Guang. He was in his early thirties. The woman was Fan Wenli. She was thirty years old exactly. They were both top singers in the country and were ranked a little higher than Zhong Yi on the Celebrity Rankings Index. One was in the middle of the B-list rankings while the other was in the lower half of the B-list rankings, making them look like they were just average celebrities. However, these two people were considered top singers in the singing industry. As comparison, when Heavenly Queen Zhong Yuanqi was at her lowest point in terms of record sales, she was estimated to be selling two-thirds of what Chen Guang and Fan Wenli were. Citing either one of them as an example, they could easily be labeled top singers in the singing industry. But of course, when they were at their lowest point in record sales, they also lagged far behind Zhong Yuanqi. After all, a Heavenly Queen was still a Heavenly Queen and even at that lowest point, her fanbase was still on a different level. This also clearly explained the problem here. Chen Guang and Fan Wenli were only focused on their music careers and hardly ever crossed over to the film and television drama industries. If the celebrity rankings index excluded those movie stars and hosts, and the rankings were only based on the music industry alone, then the two of them would surely be ranked in the top 20. They could be considered as B-listers in the entertainment circle but A-listers in the music industry. This was also the reason why Zhong Yi was paying them a visit today after pondering for a long time. Because the two of them were the most professional of singers, their image also aligned with the voice. Actually, even if he found an A-lister celebrity who was primarily a movie actor and secondarily a singer, it would still be all right. But Zhong Yi felt that would make the selections a bit incomplete. A stage where vocals were the main feature would surely need to focus on that point. 
So whether it be the stage, the contestants, or the guest coaches, he knew he needed the most reputable singers from the music industry, and not just someone who was highly rated in the overall entertainment industry. These two things were totally different. After chatting for a long while, Zhong Yi had gotten familiar with them. Only then did Zhong Yi touch on the topic. He said, regarding my invitation over the phone earlier, what do you think? Chen Guang looked at his wife then said to Zhong Yi, actually, I specifically went online to do some research on it. A program that does not care about looks and only focuses on vocals, I get the feeling that it's just a gimmick, isn't it? Zhong Yi said, yes, it is a gimmick, but not the type of gimmick you're thinking of. What I want is to make a most professional singing program. That's no lie. The contestants we want are also not limited only to those who have the looks or stage presence. As long as they can sing well, I want them all. Chen Guang sighed, the concept of this program is good, at least. That's something I agree with. Beside them, Fan Wenli laughed and said, yes, if only you'd encountered such a program back then, you wouldn't have had to toil so hard for five full years. You would have gotten very popular early on. Fan Wenli was very beautiful and was a singer who overall had good looks, a good demeanor, and a good voice. However, Chen Guang's looks could only pass as SOSO. He didn't look outstanding and even had some pockmarks on his lower left cheek from past acne. This was why Chen Guang had a very difficult time when he debuted. It wasn't until recently that his singing career took off due to his determination and some lucky opportunities, helping him get accepted by everyone. Now that his popularity was soaring, Chen Guang was finally able to reap the fruits of the labor he had put in all these years. Chen Guang was laughing and sighing at the same time. My singing career path can only be described as extremely arduous. I've easily put in more effort than others by ten or a hundred fold before I was able to stand at the same level as some of them. Other people would find it difficult to relate to this experience of mine. Zhong Yi said, I do understand it. Zhong Yi, too, was not someone who had good looks. Chen Guang took a look at him and said happily, how can we be compared? You have the eloquence, literary, and math talent, and even musical talent, so don't compare yourself to me. With my looks, I had to walk this entertainment industry's career path with only one leg. Those who were blessed with good looks could be described as walking down it with two legs, but for you, Zhong Yi, you have been walking down it with ten legs. Even those pretty boys from Korea could not compare to you, so your situation is totally different from mine, ha ha. Zhong Yi said, Brother Chen, you're really praising me too much. Usually, the strategy is to praise first before attacking, so does that mean that you're going to reject my invitation? If that's the case, then I won't have any other people I can approach. Sister Fan and you are the most suitable coach candidates I can think of. Fan Wenli said, may I ask who else will be joining? Zhong Yi answered, I've already confirmed one coach, Grandma Zhong Xia. Chen Guang was stunned. Grandma Zhong? She's a great artist and a veteran of the music scene. No one can match her soprano, but isn't Grandma Zhong already half-retired? I've also never heard of Grandma Zhong ever participating in any variety programs, so how did you manage to invite her? Grandma Zhong and I have a bit of a friendship, so you could say that she gave me a little bit of face this time, Zhong Yi explained. Chen Guang thought about it for a moment and then looked at his wife. What's your opinion about this? Fan Wenli shrugged. Whatever you decide, I'll go along with it. Chen Guang said, I think this will be good opportunity and I'm really interested in such a program as well. Then why don't we discuss the joining payment? Fan Wenli looked at Zhong Yi and said. Zhong Yi immediately said, it will be a general contract for a duration of up to three months. Of course, before the scheduled recording of the main program itself, we also need the both of you to accommodate our program team's promotional and other related activities as well as endorsements that are related to the program, all of which will be covered under the joining payment and not additionally payable. But if it has to do with endorsements outside of the program or extended promotional activities, then the relevant fees will also be paid out according to the clauses of the contract. We can always discuss that at a later time. Chen Guang grunted his understanding. As for the joining payment, Zhong Yi smiled and said, what I can say is that it will surely be the highest in the industry especially when it involves two heavyweight coaches like the two of you. It wouldn't be good if we paid too little. 
It was easy to speak to Grandma Zhong since they had a friendship, and more importantly, she did not really care too much for these contracts. But for others, the joining payment was surely the most important factor. Money always came first, so if it wasn't agreed upon, even if they felt that your program was good, it wouldn't matter at all. Besides, Zhong Yi already intended to produce such a megascale talent show, so he wasn't afraid to spend. He knew that however much he spent, it would surely be worth it. Zhong Yi paused for a moment, and then said, For the two of you, what if I offered each one 10 million renminbi as the joining payment? Chen Guang's eyes moved. Fan Wenli was also surprised for a bit. Zhong Yi added, How does that sound? The couple looked at each other for a moment before Chen Guang said, I'm really unable to reject an offer like that. He had only ever participated as a guest on a talent show once before, two years ago, and that program had only paid him four million as the joining payment. Although back then, he wasn't as famous as he was now and inflation wasn't high either. But as an industry insider, Chen Guang knew that the current market was not as good as that time either. The market for talent shows was in a downturn with every television station lowering the guest joining pay, yet Zhong Yi offered the two of them a total of 20 million in joining pay. That was already a big show of sincerity. If it were any other program approaching them, he believed they wouldn't have even offered them half of what Zhong Yi had. Zhong Yi stood up and put his hand out. So, let's have a happy partnership. To a happy partnership. Fan Wenli and Chen Guang both stuck out their hands to shake Zhong Yi's hand in response. With the agreements made, the only thing left was just to sign the contract at a later date. Leaving the villa, Zhong Yi did not have Chen Guang and his wife see him out. He casually strolled toward the district as he took out his phone and scrolled through his contacts. Out of four coaches, three were already settled. He was finally down to looking for the last coach. But this last candidate was also the most difficult to convince. With such a huge reputation, it was someone that Zhong Yi had to convince no matter what, for the sake of the voice. But he knew that it would be very difficult as well, and did not hold out much hope. He left this candidate as the final one to contact as he was ready for a protracted battle. He knew of the importance of this person for the voice since a mega-scale singing talent show should unquestionably be fronted by an S-list, big-shot celebrity. Only then would the entire setup look grand, leaving the audience screaming and helping to drum up the promotions for the opener of the voice. Helping to drum up the promotions for the opener of the voice. This person would eventually serve as the main attraction for the program. Who would it be? Who could hold up the entire panel of coaches and represent them for the voice? There was already no suspense to the answer, it had to be the heavenly queen, Zhong Yuanqi. Perfect looks, a perfect body, a perfect voice, and she even had the largest fan base in the whole of China. Other than her, no one else could step up to this role. In John Yi's previous world, the voice was lavishly decked out, from the stage to the equipment, contestants to the coaches. John Yi was also aiming to achieve that right now. To avoid any accidents and a non compliance situation when he brought over the program to this world, he needed to make sure that he laid out all the proper groundwork so that this world-class program would be restored in its full glory. That was the reason why he needed such a strong lineup for the program's coaches. It needed to at least be on par, or surpass, his previous world's version of the voice of China. Old Zhong must definitely be convinced to join. But how should he do it? A heavenly queen was not simply invited with just a snap of the fingers. Right now, Zhong Yuanqi's focus was on releasing a music album, holding concerts, or taking parts in movie, and was basically not planning to participate in any recordings for television programs. As there was a market downturn presently, the programs did not pay well and tended to take too long to finish recording, only to end up getting very average viewership ratings, which could also be described as an unable-to-make-ends-meet situation. These were the reasons why any genuine heavenly kings and queens or even A-listers were taking part in fewer and fewer television talent shows. A normal variety or interview program was still all right since those would only take a day or just several hours to record. But a talent show was different. Beginning with the auditions and moving to the round of 16, then the quarterfinals and semi-finals, etc., the entire process was too lengthy. The big-shot celebrities who did not lack any job offers couldn't possibly want to waste their time on such shows. So how would he try to convince her? 
Zhong Yi typed and retyped his words before finally sending out a very long text message to her. He made an introduction of his program and briefly explained the mechanics and format to Old Zhong. DIDI. -D -I. Old Zhong replied, not interested. Zhong Yi was speechless, but replied, consider it for a moment. You can also tell me the joining payment you're looking at. Old Zhong, too many activities, no time. Zhong Yi, it's not like I need you to be here at Central TV every day for 24 hours to do the recording. It's only a few days and we're also willing to accommodate your schedule to record the program. If you have something on, then we can always record it later and we'll surely wait for you. Old Zhong, look for someone else. Zhong Yi replied angrily, Old Zhong, you're really ungrateful. My new program has just started production and needs some support, so you should really try to help me out here no matter what. Hurry up and agree, otherwise, don't expect me to write any songs for you in the future. Old Zhong, what good songs do you have? Send them over. Zhong Yi, I don't have any now, so let's talk about the program first. Old Zhong, even if I did stay to joining payment, Central TV would not be able to afford it. Zhong Yi, if you don't state it, how would you know that I am unable to afford it? After about five minutes or so, Zhong Yu Enchi finally replied, the lowest I can accept is 40 million, along with two songs from you. Zhong Yi, one song. Old Zhong, two songs. Zhong Yi, one means one, I don't have more. Old Zhong, fine. Zhong Yi decisively said, deal. It's settled then. Old Zhong, are you sure that you can afford the joining payment of 40 million? Zhong Yi laughed loudly as he typed in his reply to her, you don't have to worry about that. Just wait for your money. Old Zhong, okay, talk directly to my manager about the contract. Notify me in advance about the filming of the show and promotional trailers. Also, start thinking about the new song. I won't forget, do you think I would go back on my words for that? Zhong Yi said. It was settled. He finally managed to get the Heavenly Queen to join the coaching panel for the voice. Was 40 million renminbi a lot? To others, this might look like it was an astronomical amount, but for Zhong Yi, as long as it could help the program do well, it didn't matter how much it was. Besides, based on Zhong Yuanqi's status and popularity, as the person on top of the food chain that was the entertainment circle, if 40 million renminbi was able to convince her to join the show, then it should not be seen as a business loss at all. At the minimum, even if other television stations offered 40 million renminbi to Zhong Yuanqi to join their program, she would not agree to it. Those television stations were unable to produce and offer what Zhong Yi was able to give, a song. Old Zhong was not someone who would be moved by just anyone. Everything was A-OK. -okay. It was all settled. The four generals have been fully assembled. Chapter 642 Dissolving the Program Team Later that afternoon. It was almost time to leave work. At the program team office of The Voice, many of the staff who had been stationed at the recording site were back. They were gathered back here for a short meeting to update each other on the day's work and their progress. How's your progress? The progress is a little slow and there aren't too many registrations from the public. I couldn't settle my task either, the main issue still hinges on our offer being too low. Assistant Director Jong, are you able to spare us some funds from your side? I can't, I don't have enough to use either. Teacher Jong specifically instructed that the equipment had to be the best, and after my discussion with the vendors today, I am still lacking some funds. One of the machines went over the budget. Ari, we're really too poor. I finally understand what money makes the world go round means now. I wonder if teacher Jong managed to pull in any sponsors over at his side. We're done for. Everyone has such bad opinions of our program and the stage isn't even set up yet. When we have nothing to show for it all, who would even dare to sponsor our program? The colleagues were all sighing. At the beginning, when they arrived at this program team, they were all full of anticipation and looking forward to this Central TV Department 1's new program, which would be helmed by the legendary Zhong Yi. But who would have thought that they would be regretful after just one day of work? The strong support from Central TV Department 1 was gradually becoming just average support. With the audience not thinking much of it and the program team running out of money, they all felt that there was no longer any future for this program. 
Darkness lay ahead of them and they felt that if they continued on like this, the program team might even get dissolved before the program could be made. Meanwhile, a rumor had started internally at Central TV Department 1. Hey, did you hear? What's the matter? The program team for The Voice is going to be dissolved. Ah? Didn't they just form the team recently? They ran out of money, spending 20 million renminbi on equipment purchases alone. That was all the station had given to them as funding, but now that they're out of it, they can only sit and watch. Would the station just leave them like that? Of course the station wanted to do something about it. They were already planning to make a strong return to the variety genre of programs and did so by risking it with Zhong Yi's employment. But I don't suppose they had expected Zhong Yi to be so risky. Not mentioning the controversy behind the proposed program, but when the 20 million renminbi was spent just like that on those equipment, how do you expect the station to give them any more support? Who wouldn't be phased by seeing money being spent like that? Even Central TV Department 1 would not have that much spare cash for Zhong Yi to burn through like that. 20 million renminbi worth of production costs is already several times more than many of our other programs, so I'm sure the station was already hesitant to approve the initial sum. Oh, then this is going to be really interesting to watch. Will Zhong Yi be finished even before the ship sinks? The program really won't go on as planned then? Didn't I already say? If we got Zhong Yi to join us, then Central TV Department 1 would not have a day of peace anymore. Now do you all see why? He's only been here a day and such a situation has occurred. It's not a problem even if the audience is not too optimistic about the program. After all, he had so many programs that did not look promising before but still succeeded as a precedent, so even if the final product is not completed yet, it would still have been all right. But without money, the problem becomes real. If he can't even invite any celebrity guests or dress up the stage, how can he make any program at all? It can't even be produced and recorded for the audience to watch. Let's just see how the voice program team is going to solve this. Central TV Department 1 staff were all discussing fervently in secret, not knowing who had heard about this news or where its source was. It resulted in the rumor intensifying, not only within Central TV Department 1 but also spreading to the other departments housed in Central TV Tower. Half an hour later, John Yi came back. He walked into the tower. Ding. The staff elevator door opened. By coincidence, Chen Yi, the host of Central TV's Spring Festival Gala who had been relegated from the B-list rankings by John Yi, was just walking out of the elevator. He was going in the opposite direction of John Yi. Chen Yi was a little stunned. Zhong Yi's expression did not change. He casually swept his eyes over him as he entered the elevator. To bring it up, although these two had a heated scolding battle on the internet, this was actually their first time seeing each other in person. Chen Yi had a more pronounced reaction as he was, after all, the one who had lost his position to Zhong Yi. Furthermore, the crossing half of China to sleep with you targeted at him by Zhong Yi and his fans had left him grossed out for several days and became a joke that netizens laughed at for a while. Naturally, when he saw Zhong Yi, it stirred up his feelings quite a bit. But Zhong Yi did not feel anything. He saw Chen Yi? Then so be it. He still went about going where he needed to go and did not stop in his tracks for a moment. The reason for their different reactions was mainly down to their different experiences. As a central TV host of this level, Chen Yi was one of the station's pillars and had hosted the Spring Festival Gala before, so he could be mentioned as someone close to the top of the hosting world. He had a high status and hardly ever got into quarrels with anyone nor did he really have experience in such matters. As a result, after the previous fearsome scolding battle with Zhong Yi, it left a mark in his memory, especially since he did not win the battle. But for Zhong Yi? This person was someone who got into trouble so very often and always found the time to scold or beat up someone. For him, those were just part of his daily life, so you could say that he was very used to such situations. Now that he was seeing Chen Yi in person for the first time, Zhong Yi did not show any special reaction to him either. There were really too many people he had offended. They brushed past each other, but neither one bothered with the other. There were also a few other people in the elevator, possibly colleagues or staff who knew Chen Yi. When they saw the situation, they also had strange looks on their faces. 
they followed Chen Yi out of the elevator. One of them started speaking. I heard that the voice is going to be cancelled soon. I heard so too. The program team was only put together two days ago, and it's going to get cancelled so soon? They were too ambitious. For program with a funding of 20 million, they wanted to make it into the standard of several tens of millions more. When the funding couldn't be increased and the advertising deals didn't sell, the only out was to cancel it totally. Oh right, Teacher Chen, I heard that your program's title sponsor increased their bid? Yes, it's a newly signed contract. Could you reveal to us what kind of a figure it is? Everyone's quite curious about it. Yeah, Brother Chen, how much did you get? Haha, <laughs> there's nothing confidential about it. It sold for 38 million renminbi. Whoa, that's a new record. With the rise of the internet and the decline of the television market, there are fewer and fewer programs that can break 30 million renminbi in title sponsorship fees, yet your program's sponsorship is almost at 40 million. Yes, the contract's already been signed. Congratulations, Teacher Chen. How awesome. The program team I'm working for only managed 12 million renminbi for the same thing. 38 million renminbi, now that's really an astronomical figure to us. Their conversation had inadvertently touched on that topic. Inside the elevator, Zhong Yi could still hear what they were talking about. Even though the elevator doors had closed and he was separated from them by a large metallic door, the sound insulation wasn't actually that good before the elevator started ascending. When Zhong Yi heard their conversation, he also wondered what they meant by the program team for the voice was dissolving. Dissolved for what reason? And that title sponsorship fee they were talking about? How could 38 million renminbi be called an astronomical figure? Ding. He reached his floor. Zhong Yi walked back quickly to his own program team's office. Before he could step inside, he already saw some faces etched with worry, as several people gathered around each other looking stunned. Chen Chen, sitting beside Ha Chichi and playing games, apparently became aware and raised her head to see Zhong Yi walking in. The little kid got off from her chair and said with a sunken expression, Zhong Yi, why are you only back at this time? Zhong Yi said, didn't I already say that I had something to do? Chen Chen was still not looking too happy, probably because she blamed Zhong Yi for not being around to take care of her. What's the matter? You don't know how to go to the toilet by yourself? Didn't I tell you before that after you climb up onto the toilet, as long as you don't sit too far back, you won't fall in? Zhong Yi went up to coax her a little and promised her that she would get more snacks and television time before she was satisfied and went back to playing her games. As Chen Chen walked away, Ha Chichi and Zhongs were suddenly surrounded Zhong Yi altogether. Zhongs were said, Teacher Zhong, our program team is going to be dissolved. Ha Chichi also said, I heard from so from many of my friends too. I think it might be true. Director Zhong, what should we do now? Wu Yi was panicking. Why don't you go look for the director and have a few words with him? Help us to fight against that decision. We went to look for Brother Fu just now, but he wasn't around. Zhong Yi said in a speechless manner, who did you all hear that from? A female editor said, everyone's talking about it. There isn't smoke without fire, so it was definitely said by someone up top. Zhong Yi had heard about this as well when he was taking the elevator up. Actually, he already knew that this was just a rumor. No matter how conservative or unreliable Central TV Department 1 was they wouldn't possibly cancel a program just two days after starting it. If the rumor were true, then that would truly have been most silly. Although Central TV Department 1 had some doubts about him, but with the program not produced yet and with his previous experience and results for all to see, even if Central TV Department 1 wanted to give up on him, they would only decide on that after seeing how the voice performed after broadcasting. To cut their losses before anything was implemented? That was impossible. Zhong Yi knew that this was surely just a rumor that spread after someone had made a wild guess. Everyone was just saying what they thought. Zhong Yi pressed his hands together and spoke reassuringly, stop talking everyone. I need all of you to calm your minds. This matter is just a rumor, so please ignore it. Everyone stopped talking, but their eyes still showed signs of uncertainty. If it were purely just a rumor, then it would be fine but the problem now was also that their program was out of funding, 
and the station was very unsatisfied with the program and Zhong Yi's handling of the funds. At this moment, when the staff were already very worried that the team would be dissolved, hearing such a rumor only made it feel more real. That was what led to this situation of panic now. Seeing them in this way, Zhong Yi was angry and tickled at the same time. Was this bro so lacking in prestige? Didn't I already say that I would find a way to settle the money issue? Zhong Yi laughed and said, All right then, let me give everyone a piece of good news. This afternoon I went out for a bit and managed to confirm an exclusive title sponsor for our The Voice of China program. When Ha Chichi heard this, she immediately beamed with delight and said, You got a deal. Zhongs were also turned from worry to joy and said, It's only been a few hours and you've already managed to pull in a title sponsor. Teacher Zhong really get things done. It must be because of your great reputation. A program that had not officially begun production and did not get much optimism from both industry insiders and the audience, without having any production movements or promotions since it was announced, was able to get a title sponsor. If this were anyone else or any other program team, that would surely be just as good as daydreaming. But Zhong Yi did it. This clearly showed the value of teacher Zhong's face and reputation. No one else could do something like this. Highlighting this with an analogy, it was the same as shooting a movie. If you were an average director with an average screenplay, it would be difficult to pull in investments whomever you approached. But if you were a famous, big-shot director in the country, with all of your previous films getting several hundred millions in box office earnings, and intended to shoot a new movie today, then even if you did not have a screenplay or proposal yet, as long as you announced that you wanted to make a movie, Investors would still arrive in droves, offering to make investments into this project of yours. It was the same logic. The key question right now was, how much was Zhong Yi's reputation valued at? A male editor hurriedly asked, Director Zhong, how much did we get? A female administrative staff member asked, yeah, Teacher Zhong, how much did we manage to get? Zhong Yi kept them in suspense. Ha ha, guess. A female editor made a bold wild guess and said, 20 million? Zhong Yi shook his head. Guess higher. Higher than 20 million? Everyone was getting excited. Zhongs were immediately said, 30 million? Zhong Yi laughed and said again, even higher than that. Ha Chichi took a deep breath before saying, could it be, 35 million then? Zhong Yi said, still higher. Wu Yi said, could it be that it's also 38 million? I heard that teacher Chen Yi's program has finalized their title sponsorship contract with a renewed fee of 38 million. That is already this year's highest title sponsorship fee amount. John Yi graciously said, you can still add to that amount. What? That's still not enough? Everyone was stunned. They said, could it be, could it be 40 million? When they mentioned the words, 40 million, their hearts shuddered. They couldn't help it either, since in their minds, their knowledge and past experiences told them that a singing talent show's title sponsorship fees were only worth around this level. They had a limit and if it crossed that line, it would probably be something that they could not begin to imagine. They did not try to make any more guesses, nor would they be able to guess correctly. Seeing their expressions, Zhong Yi was feeling extremely pleased with himself. Ha Chichi said parched, teacher Zhong, just tell us quickly. The female editor hounded him and asked, Yes, Teacher Zhong, don't tease us like this anymore. Just how much did you get for the title sponsorship fee? Zhong Yi smiled and said, All right then, I won't keep you all guessing. For the title sponsorship of the voice, I have already negotiated with the Brain Gold Company to purchase it at the amount of 100 million. When this figure rolled off Zhong Yi's tongue, everyone in the office was shocked into silence. Even Chen Chen busy playing games raised her head to look at him. 100 million? A title sponsorship fee of 100 million renminbi? Ah? Huh? Hey yo! This, is this for real? How much? 100 million? Ha Chichi almost fainted. Zhang Zui and all the other staff of The Voice were getting noisy from excitement. This happiness had arrived too suddenly and out of the blue. Everyone was taken by great surprise. Chapter 643 Zhong Yi's name is worth 100 million. Soon after, a piece of news began spreading inside of Central TV. Many of the 
staff who were just getting off work or already at the base of the tower heard an unexpected rumor. The title sponsorship of The Voice had been sold. And it was even sold for an astronomical figure of 100 million renminbi. Everyone's first reaction was disbelief, followed by more disbelief, and finally, still only disbelief. Holy shit! Isn't The Voice defying all common sense now? Zhong Yi's reputation is worth 100 million. I won't believe it even if it kills me. That's right. While I agree that Zhong Yi is awesome, if you tell me that he can get 40 million for the title sponsorship, I can still somewhat accept it. After all, as such a big shot celebrity, he must have some appeal to him, but 100 million. Are you kidding? Anyone with common sense will know that it's impossible. Due to the climate of the current market, if a singing talent show program can get 30 million renminbi in title sponsorship fees, it would already be one of the highest tier productions around, but you managed to get 100 million renminbi for your title sponsorship. Are you taking blank pieces of paper as money? It must be a false rumor. That's right, this has to be a rumor. Haha, ha, how can it be so high? Do you all really believe it? It's obviously a lie that someone is spreading. This is really a brag that has gone too far. In the history of Central TV, there haven't been any cases of a variety show getting more than 80 million renminbi in title sponsorship fees, let alone your so-called 100 million renminbi in title sponsorship fees. Not only Central TV, I don't think there's a single title sponsorship that has crossed the 100 million renminbi mark at all out of the television stations across the country. If the title sponsorship was really sold for 100 million renminbi, then when added with the other advertising rights fees, won't it be headed towards 150 million renminbi in total? Even if you think with your feet, you should know that it can't possibly be that much. This amount has already exceeded the maximum possible for the industry. A 100 million renminbi title sponsorship? Do you think this is the Spring Festival Gala? But the Spring Festival Gala doesn't even sell title sponsor rights. At the program team's office of The Voice, Fu Sihong who was not in the around for the whole afternoon appeared back at the office. At the same time, Jiang Yuan, and a few managers of several related departments from Central TV Department 1 also appeared at the program team's office of The Voice. In the office, Zhong Yi was in the middle of a conversation. He said, hurry up and get the contracts ready. I need them by tonight. A female editor replied excitedly, understood, teacher Zhong. Zhong Yi added, then get someone from the related department to prepare for sets of contracts for the guest coaches. Don't fill in the names or the amount yet. Just write it up according to the general contract template. A male editor said, I'll get someone to do it immediately. At this moment, a large group of people walked into the office. Little Zhong. Jiang Yuan immediately asked, what's the situation with your program now? Zhong Yi smiled and said, Director Jiang, you're here? Fu Sihong said, you managed to pull in a sponsor? Zhong Yi responded, yes, I have settled it. Jiang Yuan said, it's great that the title sponsorship was sold, but I heard that the title sponsor rights were sold at a price of 100 million renminbi? Who spread such a piece of news? Was it you guys? If it is for the purposes of publicity and hype, you can just spread the news to the media and the audience instead. What's the use of releasing the fake news within Central TV itself? Fu Sihong asked, how much did you sell it for? Zhong Yi said happily, it's just as the rumors say, 100 million. Fu Sihong was rendered speechless. Jiang Yuan stared at him and said, tell me honestly, how much was it? He still did not quite believe it. Ha Chichi said on Zhong Yi's behalf, director Jiang, it really sold for 100 million renminbi. Just a while ago, the Brain Gold Company's manager of commercial title sponsorship rights called us to discuss the contract details. The manager also mentioned that we can sign the contract tonight and the money will be transferred to us in batches. They even said that they can include our name of the voice into their current advertising campaign that is already active in the market to help us promote our show and will not charge us any extra advertising fees. It will be considered a part of our cooperation together. Zhong Zui and the rest of the staff were also very excited. If not for that call, they would still be quivering and be like Jiang Yuan and Fu Sihong whom didn't believe it. Brain gold? The enterprise Zhong Yi was endorsing? 
the health product group that became successful overnight due to Zhong Yi's commercial. Jiang Yuan took a deep breath and looked at Zhong Yi in disbelief. He said, so that 100 million renminbi is for real. It's not just some publicity stunt. Zhong Yi smiled and said, of course it's not a publicity stunt, that 100 million is the real deal. Fu Sihong was shocked. Jiang Yuan could only stick his thumb up and exclaim, good. 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 Zhong Yi said, I've endorsed CEO Wu's company and worked with him for some time now, so the discussions went quite smoothly. CEO Wu also gave me quite a bit of face. How was this even a case of showing face to him? If it were, then the face given was just too flattering. Just your name alone was already worth 100 million. Jiang Yuan and the others really could not imagine this outcome as their opinions of Zhong Yi changed. There were some television programs that received good reviews from the audience and industry insiders, but ultimately could not make much of a profit and their title sponsorship fees were only in the region of 10 to 20 million. However, there are also some television programs that the audience and industry insiders were not so optimistic about, but just because of the popularity of the person heading it, they could still pull in numerous investors. Even before the program started broadcasting, they had already made a good profit, and Zhong Yi obviously belonged to the latter group. For the past two days, Jiang Yuan and many leaders of Central TV Department 1 had been tortured by Zhong Yi's antics and requests for additional funding. But today, there was finally some good news that helped restore their trust in Zhong Yi. Moreover, it also made them recognize Zhong Yi's worth once again. So what if the audience thought it was no good? So what if the industry insiders did not feel optimistic about it? The title sponsorship fees of 100 million had already been clinched. Their program has already been recognized by someone. Zhong Yi took the opportunity to speak, Director Jiang, you promised us before that we can freely allocate the amount of the title sponsorship fees as we like. Jiang Yuan gave him a serious look and asked, Are you going to invest all of the 100 million into the production of the program? Zhong Yi nodded, Yes. With the station's funding of 20 million, I will use a total of 120 million as the production costs. I will create an excellent program that is both unprecedented and never to be replicated. Everyone gasped when they heard that. Especially Fu Sihong, who trembled when he heard that amount. 120 million in production costs? This was only a television program. Would you need to spend so much money on it? Even if it was for a television drama or a generously budgeted movie production, a 120 million renminbi investment would be considered a major production, and would even reach the level of a Lunar New Year movie production. It might even be a Lunar New Year movie that was filmed in 3D. You're going to use the resources equivalent to a major 3D movie production to produce a television program? How much more extravagant could it get? How much of the money are you intending to burn through? What kind of a spendthrift are you intending to be? Can you get a return on investments? Jiang Yuan was actually in a dilemma right now. If Central TV Department 1 had such an astronomical figure, their financial performance for this year would certainly soar. But when he thought of his promise to Zhong Yi, he knew that he could not take back what he said. Moreover, he knew of Zhong Yi's temper as well as his rather stubborn and thorny character, so Jiang Yuan was worried that Zhong Yi would quit if he did not agree. If that happened, the 100 million in title sponsorship fees was as good as gone. Without Zhong Yi, Brain Gold would definitely not invest in them. Clenching his teeth, Jiang Yuan finally said, Yes, it is all allocated to your program team. Zhong Yi also smiled. All right then. Jiang Yuan gave some words of encouragement to the program team. I've also received news that there was a rumor going around in the afternoon concerning how the station was planning to dissolve the voices. Program team. That is a groundless statement and I've already gotten someone to investigate the identity of the rumormongers. All of you just relax and work well with old Fu and little Zhong on this program. The station will give you all the utmost support. Seeing an opportunity, Zhong Yi said, Director Jiang, then can you give more manpower? Just the 20 plus of us are not going to be enough work on a production that's worth over a hundred million. Jiang Yuan was speechless. He was just trying to placate and encourage the program team but now Zhong Yi was latching onto his words and trying to ask for more manpower. He asked, how many people do you need? Central TV has its own band, right? 
I do not need too many, just seven or eight people will do. That will save us the trouble of hiring a band, and besides, I trust our own people more. Zhang Yi was making an exorbitant demand and was afraid that Jiang Yuan would not agree, so he said, otherwise, can the station give us another 8 to 10 million instead? The 20 million you allocated to us previously was not exactly a lot, so if you can give us more, I can make the program even better. Holy shit. You still want more money. With 120 million, it's still not enough for you to spend? Jiang Yuan was shocked by this request and said immediately, I will get the band for you. Don't even think about having more funds. Zhang Yi said regrettably, all right, I guess that's also fine. Jiang Yuan did not dare say any more and hurriedly left with his people. He was afraid that, if he stayed any longer, Zhang Yi would ask for even more resources. When Jiang Yuan and his people left, they also brought along the news with them. The central TV staff who were mocking the idea of a 100 million title sponsorship fee earlier had now heard the confirmation. The voice had really signed a title sponsor for the astronomical sum of 100 million. Shock. Astonishment. This reaction was everywhere. Everyone at Central TV was stunned. Heavens. So it really wasn't a rumor. It was true. It's really 100 million. How did Zhong Yi manage to do that? This program hasn't even been made yet and there are no confirmed guests either. But someone still ventured to invest 100 million into it. Isn't this about three to four times the title sponsorship fees of other talent shows? They've gone mad. This group of people must have gone mad. This totally defies all common sense. This title sponsorship amount has blinded my eyes. Teacher Chen Yi's so-called astronomical title sponsorship fees are not even half what Zhong Yi's new program is getting. Isn't that too much of a difference? It's not even something that can be called a slight difference. For the title sponsorship fees of a television program, a difference of 10 million is as good as a difference of one degree. Chen Yi's program is actually behind Zhong Yi's by six to seven degrees. On the same night, the news was spreading. It was probably under the deliberate publicity of Zhong Yi's team that the news of the 100 million renminbi title sponsorship fees between Brain Gold and Central TV Department One's The Voice of China had been widely spread. The media was shocked. Fellow television stations were shocked. Industry insiders were shocked. All the citizens were also shocked. A hundred million. Was Zhang Yi's name really worth so much money? Chapter 640 for the most prestigious lineup of coaches in history. The next day. It was Monday morning. Zhang Yi was woken by Hu Fei's call. The current executive producer and director of Beijing Television's Do You Remember, Hu Fei, said, Little Zhang, did your new program's title sponsorship really sell for 100 million renminbi? Zhang Yi yawned and said, yes. Hu Fei said, don't fool around with me, tell me the truth. Zhang Yi laughed helplessly, why would I lie to you? Hu Fei. Zhang Yi said, we'll be starting the official promotions and announcing it later today. Hu Fei restrained himself for a long time before finally saying, you're really awesome, kid. Everything that you've done up till now have been things that always leave others astonished. This title sponsorship contract for your new program is really too large, do you even know that? Everyone at Beijing Television Station and the other television stations are all talking about that title sponsorship fee of Central TV Department One's new program. This amount is too frightening. When has any other television program ever signed a title sponsor deal that was worth as much as yours? Zhang Yi laughed and said, from now onward, there will be many others like this. Hu Fei did not agree with this. He said, this was just a one-off case based on your reputation, how could it become the norm? If you don't believe it, then let's see where we end up two years later. By then, a title sponsorship fee of 100 million will probably be the norm. The situation of this world's variety programs was seen before in Zhong Yi's previous world as well. It was also a similar situation and similar downturn, so he knew that the downturn of the television industry here couldn't go on forever either. There would be a time when it ushered in another golden age. There was always a trough and a crest, which was also often referred to as the laws of the market. Meanwhile, 
On the internet, reactions about the large sum of the title sponsorship for the voice of many netizens fell in the stage of unacceptance. In the morning, at the places where the morning newspapers were sold at, many of the entertainment sections of the various newspapers had dedicated the headlines to the issue of the title sponsorship fees, for the voice. Some people had found out about it last night. While there were also those who only knew about it when they bought the papers in the morning. Upon seeing these headlines, they were all dumbfounded. There were also people who found out about it on their way to work or when they were eating breakfast and overheard it from others. They were shocked by this piece of news. 100 million? Brain gold must have gone crazy. Will they even be able to recoup their capital? Damn. What the hell? F asterisk asterisk K. Zhong Yi has started something big again. This is more than something big, he has totally flipped everything upside down. The voice has surely broken the record for title sponsorship fees. I've heard that the rumored fees for the most popular singing program at the moment, do you remember, was only valued at 37 million. Could this be fake news? Didn't a lot of people from the industry say that there was nothing much to look forward to in the voice? Didn't they say that this program has nothing special to it and even goes against the trends of the market? If that's the case, then why would any advertisers still dump such a huge lump sum to be the title sponsor? If this news is true, then Zhong Yi must really be very bold. Even though others are willing to pay 100 million, that doesn't mean you should take it, right? Are you trying to reshuffle the industry's cards for variety programs? Are you intending to re-establish the market rules and standards? All rules have been broken. All standards are toppled. The entire television variety industry has been totally stirred up by John Yi. Previous poster, aren't you worrying too much over too many things? Yeah, if the Brain Gold Company is willing to offer that amount, then that just means that teacher Zhong is worth that much. How does it re-establish any market rules or stir up anything? Isn't it good that the title sponsorship fees are this much? If you let any other programs find their own title sponsors, I doubt they could even find someone willing to offer 50 million, much less 100 million renminbi. What do you call this? This is what you call difference. This is also an affirmation from the market upon Zhong Yi's strength and recognition. It's not like anyone can get it just because they want it. They do not enjoy the reputation teacher Zhong has. Awesome. 100 million RMB, I'm utterly convinced. Ha ha, I would really like to hear what those people who did not have much optimism for the voice have to say now. Even without anything to show for right now, they still managed to secure a 100 million renminbi title sponsorship. How face-smacking. Don't you all understand face-smacking Jong's style yet? How many times has it been already? From the start, when people said they were not optimistic about the voice, I already knew that it would end up this way. Anyway, I've always thought well of teacher Zhong Yi. No matter what programs or works he comes up with, I will surely support them. Later in the morning. Zhong Yi sent Chen Chen to school before he turned around and headed towards Bay Lake. He arrived at Central TV Tower very early to start allocating the tasks for the program's marketing and promotions. Not long after, Brain Gold published a statement, officially confirming their role as exclusive title sponsors to The Voice of China having signed a sponsorship contract for 100 million renminbi. At the same time, Central TV Department 1 confirmed the news too, with the program team of The Voice also stating that the 100 million title sponsorship fees would be fully invested into the production of the program. On top of the funding that was allocated to them by Central TV Department 1, The Voice would have a total production cost of 120 million renminbi. They sincerely invited any interested advertisers to join as well as reiterating to anyone who had a passion for music to register for the program's audition. They also publicly announced the registration and contact channels for the program team. When the news got out, it reignited the heated discussions. It's been confirmed. It's true. It's really 100 million. The contract has been signed. What the F asterisk asterisk K. 120 million renminbi, all to be used as production costs. That has to be a record. I'm so looking forward to it. What kind of quality can 120 million renminbi create in a program? I really want to see what they can come up with. 
Can anyone please tell me loudly that I did not see this wrongly with my eyes? Isn't a funding of 100 million renminbi more commonly seen in a movie shoot? Is this all going to be used only for producing a television program? You did not see wrong. Zhang Yi's making a really big move this time. And I like it. Ha ha ha. If he's going to do it, he's going to make a big one. If he's going to do it, he's going to make it the most exciting. This has always been Teacher Zhang's style. If it succeeds, his name will surely go down in the annals of history. If it fails, then it will definitely leave a stink for 10,000 years. John Yi's motto is reject mediocrity. That is what I like best about him. We already know the program's format and content, so now the only question left is, who will be the guests? Yeah, who will be joining the show? Those big shot celebrities basically no longer participate in talent shows anymore. With the viewer ratings and joining payments at near all-time lows, it makes it very difficult to get anyone good to join. If only Sister John would join the show. Haha, <laughs> previous poster, stop dreaming. I also know that it's just a dream, but I still want to think that way since I really like Sister John a lot. It's impossible that an S-list heavenly queen would take part in these kinds of talent shows as a guest. Do you know how much people like them can earn from just filming a movie? They would gain more reputation as well, and even have a chance at winning an award, so why would they bother with a television program? Even if it's just those A-list singers, I doubt they could invite them either. Besides, The Voice already does not have a very good reputation, with the professionals rating it quite poorly. At Central TV. In The Voice's program team office. Everyone here was asking the same questions too. After the female administrative staff member passed a few copies of the general contract template to Zhong Yi, she asked, Teacher Zhong, do you need me to prepare a list of guest coaches candidates for you? Shall we start inviting them one by one? Zhong Yi gave a wave of his hands and said, that's not necessary. Ha Chichi said, the first round of preliminary auditions for the contestants will be held this afternoon. I've arranged for it to start at 2 p.m. If we do not begin picking which guest coaches to invite, I'm afraid it will be too late. Zhongzhu also said, that's right, Director Zhong. We ought to get prepared early since the market environment isn't that good. The guests are getting more and more difficult to invite, especially those big shot guests who always reject television talent show programs. We have to identify our targets first and contact them one at a time and negotiate. If it doesn't work out, we move to the next candidate. Zhong Yi laughed, no need to go through all that trouble. I've already negotiated with the guests. Ah? Wu Yi said, already negotiated? Ha Chichi said in surprise, you contacted them yesterday afternoon? Zhong Yi nodded a few times, and then looked at his watch before saying, I was afraid that the news would be leaked too early and cause unnecessary trouble or changes, so I kept it a secret instead. Looking at the time now, I think they should be here soon? As soon as he stopped talking, a few people were already at the door. A staff member of Central TV Department 1 brought the guests in and said, Teacher Zhong, they were looking for your office, so I brought them here. Zhong Yi smiled and said, Thanks, friend. Ha Chichi, Zhong Zui, and the rest all did a double take when they saw them. It turned out to be the famous songstress, Zhong Xia, and behind her were her lawyer and manager, a total of three people. Everyone was stunned. Only Zhong Yi was not surprised. He went up to shake her hand and said, Grandma Zhong, you're here right on time. Zhong Xia shook his hand and said, I'm always on time, ha ha. Let's get the contract signed then. Sure, it's already prepared. I'll let you have a look first. Zhong Yi took out the contract and passed it to her. Ha Chichi pulled Zhong Yi aside and asked with a face registering surprise, you managed to get Zhong Xia to step out from her retirement. Doesn't she no longer take part in any variety programs? Everyone was truly surprised at this as no one could have expected Zhong Yi to get the issue of the guests settled so quickly after, only going out for a short while. He even managed to invite the renowned songstress as a guest for their show. Everyone knew the program quality would surely be raised by several levels if they had Grandma Zhong fronting the show. With Zhong Xia joining, not only would her appeal and popularity help the program, her professional strength would also make the program more credible. This was a great artist who had sung for the country's leaders and foreign emissaries in the past. 
before Zhong Yi could answer, before they could get over their surprise, when Zhong Xia and her team were looking through the contract, another couple and their managers arrived. A female editor exclaimed, Chen, Chen Guang. Another male editor stared at them. Fan Wenli. When Chen Guang came into the office, he directly went to Zhong Yi, smiling and waving at him. He said, Teacher Zhong, we're not late, are we? No, but since Teacher Chen and Teacher Fan are gracing us with both your presences, it wouldn't matter even if you were late. Zhong Yi spoke with a mouthful of courtesy and went up to welcome them with the contracts. Zhong Zhuo was getting excited. Ha Chichi was also getting excited. Chen Guang had come. Fan Wenli had also come. These two were the very well-known ideal couple of the entertainment circle. And when it came to popularity, these two definitely belonged to the top of the singing world. As an example, among the guest coaches in all the singing talent shows being held by television stations across the whole country, even if the most popular one stepped forward, they would not be a match for the popularity of just one of either Chen Guang or Fan Wenli. And it was even more so if you compared the two of them together. If Chen Guang and Fan Wenli joined any of those singing talent shows, they would surely sweep all those coaching panels off their feet. They were definitely the big brother and sister of any coaching lineup. And now, the two of them were here? They were both going to join the voice? The staff of the program team were all getting dizzy from this. This was no longer a matter of whether all this was happening too suddenly or not. This was a surprise no one could have expected even in their wildest dreams. With just one of them, they could already sweep away all the other singing programs, much less two of them. Zhong Xia together with Chen Guang and Fan Wenli? This lineup of coaches was too prestigious. How did Teacher Zhong do it? How did he get the three of them to come aboard? Chapter 645, on fire even before the broadcast. Outside the office area. Many people from around Central TV Department 1 had gathered here to watch. Who's that? Is that Zhong Xia? Whoa, what is Chen Guang doing here? Fan Wenli is also here with her manager? What are they doing here? It can't be that the Voices program team managed to pull them aboard for the show, right? Ah. Don't scare me like that, my heart is not that strong. Each one of them could be considered a big star who could easily shake the singing industry with just a light stamp of their feet. With any one of them coming aboard, it's already a dream fulfilled, so how did they get all three of them? With so many celebrities here who were the big shots among big shots of the singing industry, many staff from the other departments had now gathered curious on this level at Central TV Department 1 where a small portion of the offices were located. Although they could guess what was happening, they were all still rather in disbelief that it could really happen. Even Ha Chichi and Zhong were of the program team for The Voice found it hard to believe, much less them. However, what would surprise them much more than that was only about to begin. They thought that the three people gathered here right now was already a very astonishing sight to see. But the next moment, when another person walked in from outside, whether it was Central TV Department 1 staff or the Voices program team, everyone was left with their eyes wide and tongues tied. It was a woman, and she was not a celebrity, yet many people knew her and had heard of her name. The reason was simply because she was the manager of the Heavenly Queen. It was Fang Wei Hong. Zhong Yuanchi's manager. At this moment, the entire area inside and outside of the office fell silent. Zhang Xia blinked. Chen Guang and Fan Wenli were dumbfounded. Ha Chichi, Zhang Zui, and the rest were also stunned. Only Zhang Yi quickly stepped up to welcome her. Ha ha, Sister Fang. Fang Wei Hong did not look to be in the mood for small talk. She just shook Zhang Yi's hand and said, Teacher Zhang, pass me the contract. I have to leave after getting it signed. Zhong Yi asked, Sister Zhong is not here today? She's busy with an activity and authorized me to sign on her behalf. Fang Wei Hong was already a familiar acquaintance with Zhong Yi having worked with him twice before, so her tone with him was also less formal. Oh, Teacher Zhong, do you know that Sister Zhong has such a packed schedule recently that it has almost filled up the entire 24 hours of her day? I was still thinking of how I could reject some bookings to lighten the load, but somehow, this new booking arrived. Sister Zhong is really great. She did not even ask me about it and directly agreed with you. She's not a superhuman. 
Besides, there's only so much time in a day, so who gets left with planning her time and schedules then? Won't it just be left to me to coordinate and organize her activities? I already have a big headache from all these. Zhong Yi laughed, that's because Sister Zhong is so popular. Just look at people like me who are small timers and have no activities. All I do is just go to work or drink some tea. Fang Wei Hong laughed when she heard that. She replied, oh, come on. That's just because you don't have a management company and refuse to take on any commercial deals. If you spread the word that you do them, even with a hundred hours a day, it wouldn't be enough for you. She paused for a bit and then said, what I'm really curious about is, since Sister Jong has always rejected taking any talent shows, how on earth did you convince her to do it? Zhong Yi smiled and said, I promised to write her a song. Fang Wei Hong, suddenly understanding everything, exclaimed, that's exactly what I thought. Zhong Xia said from a distance away, little Fang, you're here too? Ari, Grandma Zhong, did you get deceived by teacher Zhong and join the program too? Fang Wei Hong politely greeted her while casually making a joke. Zhong Xia was tickled and quipped, yes, I was fooled by this child. After chatting for a little while, Fang Wei Hong also shook Chen Guang and his wife's hand and chatted for a while. They all knew each other, it wasn't the first time they'd met. Chen Guang was quite surprised. I hadn't expected Sister Zhong to join as well. Fang Wei Hong also said helplessly, me neither. Yesterday, Zhong Yi made a call and spoke to Sister Zhong directly about the contract. I didn't know about it until much later. Fan Wenli looked over admirably at Zhong Yi. Ha Chichi and the others were also looking at Zhong Yi with extreme admiration. Oh my god! Zhong Yuanqi is really coming aboard. Zhong Yi had somehow managed to invite the Heavenly Queen to join. An S list celebrity who always rejected taking any talent shows, and didn't even usually appear on television as a program guest, was now making an exception and joining their program. Everyone knew that Zhong Yuanqi was a celebrity at the very top of the entertainment industry in the country. Being able to invite her wasn't down to a matter of money anymore. It wasn't like she lacked that anyway. But what she was chasing after was of a different level and not found in the domestic market anymore. She had already set her sights on the foreign markets, so none of them knew how Zhong Yi had managed to get this deal done. How did he convince the Heavenly Queen? Central TV was in chaos. Jiang Yuan and some other leaders came over a while later, as they were the authorized signatories for Central TV for their part of the contract. At this time, when the amount that Zhong Yi had agreed with the four celebrities earlier was written down by him, the figures were finally made known publicly for the first time. When they saw the joining fees, even though they had just received an astronomical title sponsorship fee earlier, everyone was still stunned with their mouths agape. Zhong Xia, 10 million. Chen Guang, 10 million. Fan Wenli, 10 million. Zhong Yuanqi, 40 million. They could still reluctantly accept the joining fees of Zhong Xia, Chen Guang, and Fan Wenli since it somewhat matched their statuses and were done in accordance with the market practices for similar programs which usually paid out several million at least. But since the three of them didn't usually take up such projects, it resulted in an additional premium of about two to three million more than the market rates which everyone could understand. But the fee for Zhong Yuanqi left everyone sucking in a breath of cold air. 40 million. That was AF asterisk asterisk King Sky High joining fee. Many other talent shows only had a total investment of around 30 million or so for the entire program and production, and that was even for the more highly invested in programs. But John Yuanqi alone already commanded a fee of 40 million? It was even higher than the entire investments put into other programs? This was a never before seen sky high joining fee in the entire variety show industry. Even if she were an S list heavenly queen, this amount was still way beyond the market rates. This was too frightening. This was too exciting. Yet another record had been broken. Many of the staff looked over at Jiang Yuan, wondering what he would say. Jiang Yuan was trembling from this for a while, but managed to calm his nerves, and he quickly signed off on the contract as the authorized party for Central TV. Then he stamped the contract firmly with the organization's seal. Was it expensive? Yes. It was too damn expensive. But was it worth it? 
Jiang Yuan felt that it was worth it, and it seemed like many of the Central TV staff also felt that it was worth it. If Zhang Yi's name could already pull in a sponsorship of 100 million, who was to say that the reputation of Zhang Yuanqi, an S-list heavenly queen, did not command a joining fee of 40 million? Being able to have Zhang Yuanqi to come aboard was already an unprecedented event. It was something that no other television station's programs could achieve. Now that Zhang Yi had completed this unimaginable task, it was already considered a job completed. As for the money spent, that was only a secondary concern. The contract signing ended. Everyone started clapping. Outside the office, many of those Central TV Department 1 staff who did not seem too optimistic about the voice back then and felt that the program would be cancelled even before it started were now looking at Zhong Yi and his program team with a different attitude. A 100 million title sponsorship, a total production value of more than 100 million, a coaching group headed by a heavenly queen. This investment and lineup had them patting themselves on the chest and admitting that no other television program in the history of this industry could do what The Voice had done. They did not know how the program would turn out from here on, but just this glittering lineup alone had totally blinded everyone. An hour later, the promotions and marketing for The Voice began and immediately spread like wildfire. On the official website for The Voice, the section where the introduction for the four guest coaches were originally a black picture with a question mark over them, but were now being updated with their pictures and detailed introductions. Quick, take a look. Wow, the list of coaches is being announced. How exciting, I wonder who's the first. I'm here, I'm here to check it out. With the voice at the heart of the struggle on the news, all entertainment news today was focused on them. Right now, any minor changes on the website would attract the attention of countless people. The first name was announced, Zhong Xia. This caused quite a commotion. It's Grandma Zhong. She's a great singer. Heavens! Grandma Zhong has come out of retirement. The second name was also updated, Chen Guang. At once, Chen Guang's fans all flocked to this news. My prince! Old Chen has joined as well. Ha ha ha. Old Chen, well done. Chen Guang and Zhong Yi are two of my favorite celebrities. I would never have expected them to work together. Looks like this is going to be fun. Teacher Chen is a truly talented singer. I like his songs a lot. Then, the third name, Fan Wenli. Hey yo. Old Chen, even your wife has joined. Heavens. They're all big shot celebrities. Yeah. Just how much did the Voices program team spend on this? My eyes have been blinded. Even old Chen and old fan have been invited? Isn't this lineup defying all common sense? Won't teacher Jong have to pay for his crimes if he scares us all to death? There's still a fourth? Who's the last one going to be? Quick, announce the fourth coach's identity already. Why are they so slow, who could it be? Who's the final one? As the names were announced one by one, in just a short period of time, everyone's appetite was whetted as they excitedly reacted to each announcement. Everyone was utterly convinced by Zhong Yi's amazing work. It was truly too surprising. Eventually, under the watchful gaze of everyone, the fourth coach's picture was updated. Refresh! A picture of Zhong Yuanqi at a concert now appeared in the place of the fourth coach's introduction. Upon seeing Zhong Yuanqi's picture, it was as if at that moment everyone browsing on the website for The Voice had fallen silent. It seemed like time had stopped for an instant. Then the comment section exploded. What? It's the Heavenly Queen. Damn. Do they need to be that extravagant? Did Central TV invest all their money they had? They're really willing to give everything for this program? Not only that, this is no longer a question of money. In the past, even when many variety shows offered Zhong Yuanqi a lot of money, she did not join them. This is big news. The Heavenly Queen has descended onto the voice. Is this for real? Zhong Yi's truly awesome. I only wonder how much Sister Zhong's joining fee is worth. Yeah, how much? At this time, an anonymous user left a comment, don't ask how much it is, all I can tell you is that it is a sky-high figure. Don't leave us in suspense. Quickly speak. 
Just how much money was it? That anonymous user did not reply for a long time, and then finally posted, the exact amount is, 40 million before taxes. With that. Those industry insiders from the other television stations who came to check out the situation nearly vomited blood. What did you say? 40 million? It was getting lively on the internet as the media and netizens began discussing this. All these news and updates had really left everyone in shock. The people left speechless were those experts. Many of these experts and so-called industry insiders did not say a word. Because they really did not know what they could say anymore. They had analyzed the voice of China from head to toe and called out its problems and flaws, saying and backing up their claims of how this program would definitely only be a cult television program or average quality show, similar to all the other talent shows produced in this time of downturn. Yet somehow these big shot celebrities still jumped aboard the program? Why did they all rush to join like they were not afraid of anything? Were they all crazy? Some people were looking forward to it. Some people called it good. Some people maintained their doubt. Some people still were not optimistic. But however people put it, with the attention the voice of China was getting, with the lineup of the guest coaches, with the invested production costs and title sponsorship, the program was already on fire even before the broadcast. This discussion topic could no longer be matched by anything else. Zhong Yi had planned for all the news to be spread out within a 12-hour time frame in order to bombard the internet with overwhelming publicity for the voice. The first steps were already beautifully taken, but from here on, he knew he had to spend more effort on the auditions. Chapter 646 These are the contestants you guys picked. In the afternoon. At Central TV's basement recording studio. This was the venue that the Voices program team had booked temporarily to hold the preliminary auditions. They did not actually need to do any recording but only needed to use the location today to pick some outstanding and talented contestants for the recorded stage auditions by the coaches. The preliminary auditions were estimated to take place over two weeks. It would be held either once daily, once every two days, or even once every three days. The degree of intensity would depend on the number of contestants and their standards. The application conditions only required candidates to submit a demo of their singing. If the program team staff felt that the candidate met the required standard, they would notify them to make their way here for the preliminary auditions. If it's not up to standard, then they would not even be notified at all. After all, with just the program team staff's strength, they were unable to support so many contestants and decidedly had to make a small sacrifice in some of the proceedings. At the venue, the staff had all arrived and gathered. Zhong Yi came over holding a box lunch he had taken from the central TV cafeteria. As he was in a rush, he decided to eat as he walked over, finishing it up just as he arrived. Little Wang walked up to him and said, hand that to me. Okay, thanks a lot. Zhong Yi gave the empty lunch box to her. At the other side, Ha Chichi, in charge of the preliminary auditions, was pointing and instructing the staff on their work. When she saw Zhong Yi, she immediately brought two people over with her and said, Teacher Zhong, the arrangements are almost all done. We can proceed with the auditions. Zhong Yi nodded. When will the contestants arrive? Ha Chichi answered, Many of them are already here, but we're only starting in the afternoon, so I got someone to bring them to the waiting room. They sat down in front of the computer. Zhong Yi randomly opened a few emails and listened to some of the demos that the contestants sent in. He said, were these chosen today? Ha Chichi nodded. They were picked by me and the professionals one at a time. Then she introduced the few people beside her to Zhong Yi. A teacher Sunday. And a teacher Yang. They were both music industry insiders who were borrowed from Central TV. Zhong Yi shook hands with them and got to know them a bit. He said, teacher Sun, teacher Yang, I will have to trouble the both of you in the coming days. Teacher Sun immediately said, it's no trouble at all. We're here to help, so you can consider us professional consultants who give our opinions for your consideration. As for how the program will be done and how to pick the contestants, we will still leave that up to you, Director Zhong. Since they were transferred to the program team of The Voice, they had to listen to Zhong Yi's commands as they were now members of his team. One of the music consultant recommended, Director Zhong, this person you're listening to right now is one of the better ones. 
both old son and I agree on this, as does AD1 Ha. Ha Chichi praised, right, this person sings very well. Only then did Zhong Yi seriously listen to it. It was a woman's voice. The vocals and basic singing were quite good, and the sound was crystal clear. There wasn't any sharpness or anything bad with it. She also had quite a high soprano voice. Teacher Sun analyzed, she should be considered a very trained vocalist. It feels very stable as well. Listening to her voice, it probably belongs to someone who has had experience performing on stage before. And judging from her picture, she looks quite good too. I feel that she has what it takes to become a star. Teacher Yang added, but it will also depend on how well she performs later. Name, Chang Sai. Gender, female. Age, 25. Hometown, Beihe Province. Occupation, music teacher. After taking a look at her personal information, Zhong Yi did not say anything. He just stored it in his mind and asked, for today's first wave of preliminary auditions, are there any with good potential? Ha Chichi pointed at an email on screen. This person is quite good too. The music consultant beside them nodded and said, this person was trained in the performing arts and graduated from a real music college. His singing is very good and he's also currently a backup singer for a certain star, so we can consider him to be a professional. If such a person got on stage, he probably would not have any stage fright at all and could perform quite well instead. Since we have to consider if they can perform to their potential while on television, if we get total rookies for this show, they might get nervous and make mistakes. When that happens, the quality of the broadcast will also be affected. That's why on all the other talent show programs most of the contestants are in music-related professions. Those type of contestants are always the most well accepted by television programs. They're often invited to take part in many different programs since due to various reasons they did not do well in their past. Participations on the other programs, though their stability on the programs is what's good about them. Name, Huliangi. Gender, male. Occupation, musician. When Zhong Yi finished listening to that person's demo, he did not show any expression at all and only asked, just these two. No others? Ha Chichi observed Zhong Yi's reaction, not knowing what to make of it. She answered, We've already notified 50 candidates to join today's round of auditions. Most of them are good enough. It's just that these two are the more outstanding ones. We've also singled out a few others that are quite good, though they did not register for the audition and were recommended by staff from our internal department, or seen on other television programs instead. If you agree to it, we can immediately start making contact with them. Invite them to join our program? Zhong Yi asked, who are they? Let me take a look. Such as this person. Ha Chichi bent over to handle the mouse and clicked on a video clip of a singing talent show from two years ago. Here, take a look at this one. The video started playing. It was of a man singing a Heavenly King's classic track. Ha Chichi said, back then, on the show, he did not qualify and was eliminated at the second round, but most music consultants have a good impression of him. He most probably did not get into the next round because of some result fixing by the program team for that competition. Zhong Yi did not say a word. Ha Chichi said, Director Zhong? The music consultants also looked at Zhong Yi. Ha Chichi immediately continued, and there are a few other musicians we have our eyes on. Their professional qualities are very good. I know that our program is looking for people who can sing well, and those people are quite good at singing as well. Why don't I show you? Their information is all in the computer. It should be easy to talk to them if I invite them over, alternatively, we can also offer them an appearance payment which I'm sure they'd agree to. John Yi gave a wave of his hands and said, forget it, let's not look at those first. He checked his watch for the time and suggested, why don't we do it this way, the auditions will start at 1.30pm sharp, while I'll go out for a while and be back very soon. Having said that, Zhong Yi left. Zhong Yi had come to the audition venue with high expectations, but before he could even warm his seat, he already had to leave. The program team staff looked at each other with blank faces. Wu Yi, puzzled at this, asked, what's with teacher Zhong? I don't know, Ha Chichi replied, not understanding anything either. We found people in accordance to the standards, didn't we? 
Don't all the other talent shows also pick their contestants this way? It's not like we judged them based on their physical appearances either. One of the music consultants remarked, maybe it's that teacher Jong just had something to attend to. Ha Chichi took her mind off the matter and said, let's continue from here then. Go through the candidates' information once more while wait for teacher Jong to come back before we begin the auditions. Notify the candidates about the start time and provide them with box lunches if they haven't eaten lunch yet. Little Wang, I leave you in charge of the waiting room. Outside. When Zhong Yi came out of the basement, he briefly shook his head a little. He wasn't just dissatisfied with Ha Chichi and the others regarding the candidates they chose, he was extremely frustrated. Was it that the contestants were not up to standard? It wasn't that and in fact their singing was also relatively good and safe, but this was not the desired show effect he wanted. He needed a different kind of contestant. From the start, Ha Chichi and the others, or rather it should be said that the whole of Central TV and the entire country, all did not know what kind of a program he was aiming to do. They basically had no understanding of the concept that Zhong Yi wanted, not one of them. But come to think of it, he couldn't blame them. It was just because Zhong Yi had seen things they had never seen before, so their understanding of things was much too different. How could he handle this? What could he do to make them understand what he was looking for? Zhong Yi felt that using words to explain was not enough. He needed to be more direct and place an example in front of their eyes and ears to get his idea of the concept across to them. And so, Zhong Yi thought of a person, someone whose voice involuntarily floated into his mind. He decided that he would pull in the first contestant for their program to tell them what his understanding of a good voice was. Well trained and safe? A high soprano? With experience performing on stage? Slick and proficient in singing? Was that what having a good voice meant? Zhong Yi got into his car and drove straight out from television station tower and headed for the city. Chapter 647 Confirmation of the First Seeded Contestant Afternoon Along Nanshinhua Avenue It was currently afternoon recess at number 2 Experimental Primary School. The main gate was locked as students were not allowed to leave the school during lunch break or breaks between classes. The main gate would only be opened at the start or end of school. The car stopped and Zhong Yi got out from the car. He walked near to the guardroom and greeted, Uncle. When the security uncle saw him, his eyes lit up. Zhong Yi! It's me, can you open the side gate for me? Zhong Yi smiled. The security uncle naturally knew who he was and asked, your kid has given you trouble again. The teacher has called you up for a meeting again. He fished out the key and opened the side gate for Zhong Yi. Come on in. Zhong Yi said, thank you very much, uncle. Walking in farther, he reached the large playground. He could see many children playing on it, some kicking the shuttlecock, one some playing basketball, and some others in a group playing Eagle Catches Chicks, a traditional Chinese chase game. Ah. Don't run. Ha ha ha, Fang, you're too slow. Pass it to me, pass it to me. Take the shot. The school field was filled with frolicking sounds and voices. Zhong Yi could not see Chen Chen anywhere. Even without needing to think, he could figure that out Chen Chen would not participate in these activities. She was deaf definitely in the classroom napping or reading some comic book she had snatched from some little boy. Zhong Yi did not go upstairs because he had not come for Chen Chen. He had other motives this time. His eyes scanned the school field and he suddenly spotted the person he was looking for. At a corner of the playground. Chen Chen's form teacher Zhao Mai, PE teacher Luo Yu, and some other teachers were seated on a long bench, happily chatting as they supervised the children's activities. This was a school regulation as they were worried that the children would get into trouble while playing or injure themselves from overexertion, as they played sports during the break. Every afternoon recess, there would be some teachers on shift duty at the playground. If it snowed, there would be more teachers supervising the break. Zhao Mai said, do you all know about Zhong Yi's new program? A sixth grade mathematics teacher said, how can we not know about it? It's all over today's news. Luo Yu added, my goodness, even Zhong Yuanqi, old Chen, and old fan joined as coaches for the program. With so much money spent, this program must definitely be good to watch. 
Zhao Mai laughed, I'm also waiting for it as well. I'm really anticipating watching it on television. Beside them, a fine arts teacher suddenly looked at Luo Yu with interest and asked, Teacher Luo, why don't you go and take part in the program since you like singing so much? Luo Yu did not even give it thought and waved it off. He, me? Forget it. Zhao Mai said, don't the application conditions for the voice state that they do not judge on looks or background? Teacher Luo, you should give it a try since you like to sing so much. Your dreams of becoming a singer might actually get fulfilled this time. Previously, when you criticized Zhong Yi and tore into him, it was only because of work. It was right to tell her guardian off as Chen Chen was really being too naughty. From what I know of Zhong Yi, he is not a petty person and he certainly won't take it to heart. Luo Yu continuously waved her hands. Come on, even if teacher Zhong did not bear any grudges, do you expect that I could appear on TV to sing? I'm afraid that the equipment will be damaged by my voice. With that, several teachers burst out laughing. Everyone in school knew of her reputation for having a lousy voice. Luo Yu sighed, I love to sing but I still know where I stand. That is such a big program with over a hundred million invested and even has the heavenly queen as coach. With my looks, how can I appear on TV? As a PE teacher, I should just concentrate on teaching my PE classes. Teacher E is a more suitable candidate to apply since she is good-looking and also a music teacher. She should just go and apply. Besides, we have some degree of a relationship with John Yi. If we ask a favor of him, it should not be a problem to take part in the audition, right? Zhao Mai said, how would we ask for his help? Zhong Yi is not someone you can just meet if you want to. Luo Yu exclaimed, if not, then we can just call him up on the pretext of a guardian meeting. Call him and make him come over. Hasn't Chen Chen, the little rascal, always been getting in trouble anyway? Suddenly, a voice sounded from behind their backs. Who wants to call me? Zhong Yi abruptly appeared. Luo Yu turned around and was dumbfounded. Ah! Zhao Mai and the rest of the teachers were also stunned. Zhong Yi? Then Zhao Mai seemingly thought of something and laughed. She patted Luo Yu and said, those words were from teacher Luo and do not represent our opinions. Why is he here? Speak of the devil. When Luo Yu heard that, her heart sank. Previously, she did know that this person was Zhong Yi as he was wearing sunglasses and it obstructed her view of his face. She only knew that he was Chen Chen's guardian, so she criticized him without a second thought. Afterwards, when she realized that he was Zhong Yi, the composer and writer of her two favorite songs, her stomach churned. Today, Luo Yu was just idly chatting with a few other teachers and she just happened to make a joke of calling up the guardian for a meeting, but who knew that Zhong Yi was actually right behind them and could hear what they were saying? Luo Yu literally wished that she could find a hole to crawl in to hide herself from this embarrassment. How unlucky. Why am I always so pathetic? Teacher Zhong, no, no, I was just joking. Luo Yu quickly came up with an excuse, and the previous time, I really didn't know that it was you. No one told me anything at all. The bell started ringing. It was the signal for classes to begin again. A female teacher suddenly said, I'm leaving then. It's time for class. I'll be leaving too, the fine arts teacher said. Zhao Mai looked at Zhong Yi and asked, Are you looking for Chen Chen? Or? Zhong Yi said, No. Zhao Mai nodded. Then all right, I'll go to my class with the children now. When Luo Yu saw that everyone had left, she also wanted to leave, so she said, Then I also. Actually where could she go? As a PE teacher, even if she had classes, it would be right on this playground. Zhong Yi stretched out his hand and called to her, Teacher Luo, please stay put. Luo Yu's eyes shrank. It's over, it's really over, Zhong Yi has a grudge against me now. He's going to find trouble with me. Oh my mother. Why do I have such a hard life? Are you calling me? Luo Yu acted dumb, stood still, and turned her head around. Zhong Yi asked, Do you have any classes in the afternoon? Luo Yu wanted to say that she had classes until midnight, but she really did not have any classes in the afternoon, so she stammered, about that. Zhong Yi smiled and said, let's have a talk, shall we? Luo Yu grit her teeth and acquiesced, all right. 
She turned around and led Zhong Yi to the equipment storage room as there was no one there. It did have some small chairs in an alcove where they could also have drinks. The room was small and simple. I'll get you some water. Luo Yu busied herself with chores. Zhong Yi said, there's no need, I will not stay for long. I'm here to ask you about a matter. Luo Yu said at once, no need to say any more, I know it's all my fault, I. It's not about that matter. Zhong Yi was a bit speechless and said, I'd like to ask you about that day I heard you singing Wishing We Last Forever. Well, do you always sing like that normally? Luo Yu was shocked. Singing? Wishing We Last Forever? Ah, uh, that's right. My voice has always been quite lousy and everyone calls me Raspi Luo. That's how my singing is and no one likes to hear it. I like to sing whenever I'm free and will just grab any opportunity to sing a few lines. My family members also find me irritating when I'm singing. Every time I open my mouth to sing, my mother will go out and take a stroll. Zhong Yi asked, do you like to sing? Luo Yu replied, of course I like to. I've even been singing every day since childhood. Why else do you think my vocals got damaged during puberty and became like this? Zhong Yi nodded and inquired, then if you are given a stage to perform on now, would you dare to step up on it? Luo Yu instinctively answered, what's there to be afraid of? As long as anyone wants to listen, I will try to sing even if you place me on the surface of the moon. A, hey, why are you asking me this? Zhong Yi acknowledged and then said something surprising, in that case, as the executive director of the Voice of China, I hereby formally invite you to join us. Luo Yu was shocked. What? Zhong Yi repeated, I will reserve a spot for your participation. Luo Yu exclaimed, reserve a spot for me? Why are you reserving it for me? Zhong Yi said in an amused manner, because you're good at singing, so I want you to participate and get involved with the voices audition and the competition proper. Luo Yu said, I can appear on TV? Zhong Yi confirmed, that's right. Luo Yu said, is it the most talked about program right now, that the voice of China? The program that even the Heavenly Queen has joined? Zhong Yi affirmed, yes. Luo Yu said, my singing is good? Zhong Yi maintained, that's right. Luo Yu hurriedly waved it off. Oh, come on, how can my singing be good when my voice is so lousy? You should reconsider. Even my own mother who is my immediate family does not like my singing, so why would others think it's good? Do you think I don't know what I'm worth? Zhong Yi was amused by these words. People from Beijing had a particular sense of humor, comprised of dark humor and self-mockery. It was specific to the locals of Beijing and could not be found at other regions as they all had their own different and unique humor styles. Zhong Yi attested, Teacher Luo, I came specifically for you this time. I'm very sincere in inviting you and truly feel that you are good at singing. Who says that you have a lousy voice? I really don't feel that way. Besides, I would not have come looking for you if you had a traditionally nice voice. Central TV is having an audition around 1 p.m. I don't need to deceive you on this matter if you agree. You don't have any classes in the afternoon anyways, right? Then you should directly follow me right now and come to the audition venue. If you're afraid of embarrassing yourself or that your voice would scare others, then forget it. Treat it like I did not say anything. You will remain as a PE teacher here and continue to sing only for yourself. Having said that, Zhong Yi stopped talking. Seeing Zhong Yi this serious, Luo Yu was also at a loss for words. After about 30 seconds, Luo Yu asked, Can I really make it? Zhong Yi nodded. It's not going to be a problem. Luo Yu asked again, Are you sure my voice can really? Zhong Yi interrupted, I'm sure. Upon hearing this, Luo Yu finally hardened her resolve. Okay. If you guys want to listen. Then I will sing. Who's afraid of who? Teacher Zhong, I will go. Zhong Yi smiled and uttered, I was waiting for you to say that. Chapter 648 Open Calls for the Voice Begin Later that afternoon. At the venue of the audition. It was almost time and the first wave of contestants for the day were already gathered. However, since executive director Zhong Yi was not back yet, Ha Chichi and the program team staff did not dare to kick off the audition as they preferred to wait for the person in charge to come back first. 
Why isn't it starting yet? It should be starting soon. Aya, I'm so nervous. Actually, I just took a shot and submitted my application. I never expected that I would get notified. Who are the judges? What kind of music genres do they like? I heard that executive director Zhong Yi will be here today, so getting through will completely depend on Zhong Yi's decision. I think that if we sing either of Zhong Yi's two songs for the audition, the chances of going through will be higher, but I'm only just guessing so. That's right, that's right. Then I will sing Woman Flower. It will not be as simple as you all think. Whether it is a Wishing We Last Forever or Woman Flower, these two songs were all sung by the Heavenly Queen before. Be it your singing ability or voice, do you all think you can sing better than the Heavenly Queen? Can you all carry the song and make it your own so that it feels different from the Heavenly Queen's version? This type of song that everyone is familiar with will not be of help when exhibiting your own unique characteristics. If not carefully dealt with, it may even backfire, making the song feel neither like your own nor like the original. That's true. Good point. In the contestants' waiting room, everyone was busily chatting away. There were all kinds of people were here, such as some anxious contestants who made many trips to the toilet, some sitting by themselves in a corner and practicing their songs, and even some experienced talent show veterans relating their experiences to the first-timers. Among them were two people in the group who were relatively more conspicuous. One of them was Chang Sai and the other one was Hu Liangyi. They were the two highly recommended contestants by Ha Chichi and the music consultants, both considered professional musicians. One was a music teacher, the other a backup singer. They'd already had some years of experience in the industry, could sing very well, and had good looks, so naturally they stood out with more confidence than the rest in such a setting. It could also have been due to the fact that Ha Chichi and the program team had already communicated with them earlier, so they knew of their importance compared to the others. As a result, they unconsciously drew a boundary and stayed away from the rest of the contestants. They were both seated in the last row and when other contestants came up to talk to them they did not respond much. One of them played with their phone while the other was listening to music. Suddenly, little Wang of the program team came and announced, everyone get ready, the auditions are about to begin. Everyone looked to her. Little Wang was holding a roster. She explained, I will start calling names one at a time in a while. When you get called, please proceed into the room where you will sing a cappella for the song you have chosen to perform. If the executive director and the judges feel that there is a need for further screening, you will be asked to sing a designated song. At the other side. At the audition venue. John Yi had returned. He told Little Wang to notify the contestants to get ready. After that, he handed Luo Yu over to another staff member of the program team and said to him, bring teacher Luo to the contestants' waiting room and add her name on the list of contestants. Then he told Luo Yu, teacher Luo, please get ready. When Luo Yu saw the large setup, she felt a bit nervous since she had only ever sung a few lines of a song in the school. She had never, ever before seen and performed in front of such a large setup, but she said, okay, okay. Ha Chichi asked dumbfounded, Teacher Zhong, who is this? The music consultants also did not understand what was going on. Why did Zhong Yi go out and bring back a person? She even looks fat? And not the least bit good looking? Her voice was even worse. In Beijing slang, it would be described as, a lousy voice that really sucked. Zhong Yi smiled and replied, this is a contestant whom I brought back, but let's not bother about her for now. Let's begin the auditions, shall we? Okay. Ha Chichi raised her voice and called for the staff to get into their positions. Zhong Yi, Ha Chichi, Teacher Sun, and Teacher Yang sat at the judges' table, which was in fact just a long table. As the preliminary auditions were not the television broadcast auditions, they did not get too particular about how it looked. They just brought over a long table as a temporary measure and put some mineral water bottles or their own teacups on it. There weren't even any name tags displayed. John Yi said, let's begin. Hearing that, little Wang standing at the door started to call out names, number one, Li Lily. Soon after, a very fair-skinned girl walked in from outside. When the door closed, she smiled and pretended to be calm as she stood in the center of the room, the microphone in front of her. 
Then she said, Good afternoon, judges and teachers, I'm Lee Lily, currently a university student. Ever since childhood, I've always liked singing and won my district's annual singing competition, and Ha Chichi interrupted, let's first hear your singing. Lee Lily acknowledged, okay, the song I'm going to sing is called Blue Coast. Since this was not a television broadcast, there was no musical accompaniment or a live band playing. Although the effects of a cappella were certainly not better than with music accompaniment, it was precisely because a cappella would reveal a person's voice characteristics and basic singing abilities, that the auditions were held this way. Of course, the contestants were allowed to bring their own instruments and sing while playing. Those capable of playing instruments would get additional points as well in any traditional talent show. The first contestant started to sing. As she was probably not nervous or not used to singing without musical accompaniment, her singing went slightly off-key at the beginning of the second verse, though she was able to gradually return to the melody by the fourth verse. Without waiting for her to finish singing, Ha Chichi acted by observing Zhong Yi's expression and said to the first contestant, All right, that's enough, you can go back and wait for the news. Li Lily voiced her understanding with slight disappointment. However, Zhong Yi directly told her, I'm sorry, but there's no need to wait for any news. You sang quite well, but the time being, you did not meet our requirements. Sorry about that. Li Lily bowed with regret. Thank you, judges and teachers. Then she left. Zhong Yi told Ha Chichi, we don't have to lead the contestants on. It's meaningless to tell them to wait for the news. Just tell them upfront whether they passed or failed the audition so that they won't hold out hope while waiting at home aimlessly. If they had kept their friends and relatives informed but ended up getting a call telling them they had failed, it would only be more troublesome. He would naturally act in accordance with his own style for his program. He did not care how the other program teams handled their processes and how the audition should carried out. All he knew was that he would do it based on what he felt was right. Ha Chichi nodded. Understood. Teacher Sun said with some regret, we heard this child's demo and thought that it wasn't too bad. But her live performance was clearly different from her demo. Teacher Yang said, she's probably just too nervous. Another judge remarked, nervousness was just one thing. Her singing also seemed to have some problems. Ha Chichi said, let's move on to the next person. The second person. The fifth person. The tenth person. Very quickly, ten contestants had finished their auditions, but apart from just one person who performed at an acceptable level, all the others were less than satisfactory. At least, the expectations were different after listening to their demos. Under the a cappella singing conditions, these contestants' potentials were greatly discounted. Finally, it was Chang Sai's turn to perform. Ha Chichi had high expectations of her as she was a seeded contestant. The other music consultants also focused their attention on her. Their eyes were no longer distracted by other things as they had very high expectations for a good sapling like this person, who could easily compete for first place on any other talent show. Even if she couldn't place first, she would surely be considered in the standard of the top five contestants. Having been in this industry for so many years, the consultants definitely had the ability to spot such talent. Now, it only depended on how she could showcase her potential at the audition performance. Chang Sai was a tall and beautiful lady. Although her figure was not perfect, it was still quite good. She greeted, Good afternoon, teachers. My name is Chang Sai and the song that I'll be singing is Woman Flower. As expected, she pulled it off like the professional she was. When Chang Sai started singing, Ha Chichi and a few of the music consultants immediately nodded several times. This was what you'd call a professional, the true ability of a musician who even when singing a cappella could still sing it very well. Woman flower, swaying in the red dust. Woman flower, wavering softly in the wind. Her singing style was unlike Zhong Yuanchi's and Zhong Xie's as she performed the song in a higher octave. Especially when singing the words, woman flower. If it were Zhong Yuanchi's version, this part here would carry an alto feeling. This song was not supposed to have any parts where the octave should increase, but because Chang Sai managed to grasp the octave change nicely, this part of the song came to a penetrating soprano. Although at the end the last trail of her voice became somewhat shaky and did not stabilize, the overall feeling was still very uplifting. 
after she finished singing. Chang Sai looked confidently at the judges. Ha Chichi nodded, Teacher Zhong. Several of the music consultants were also very satisfied with her performance. One of them said, although the higher octave singing strayed at some point and you did not manage to sustain the vibrato, the overall performance was still very good. I propose that she can pass through the audition. Teacher Sun seconded, me too. Teacher Yang concurred, I agree as well. Ha Chichi also had no doubts about it and felt that she really sang quite well. I approved too. Chang Sai had already revealed a smile. Thank you, judges. However at this moment, Zhong Yi looked at her and said, I'm sorry, you sang very well but it still does not meet my requirements. Please return. Chang Sai was shocked. Ha Chichi was stunned. Wu Yi was stunned. Teacher Sun and Teacher Yang were also stunned. Teacher Sun could not sit still anymore and asked, why? Little Chang's singing was a bit flawed but her flaws did not detract from her potential. This kind of standard is already quite good. In such an amateur talent contest, she already qualifies as a contestant with very high potential. Surely you cannot try to compare her with the Heavenly Queen's singing ability, right? Those flaws can be tolerated. Zhong Yi said, first, her voice didn't have any special characteristics to it. Second, her singing is only at a rather good standard, not an excellent standard yet. Third, Woman Flower is not supposed to be sung in this way. The way she expressed herself did not match the lyrics. Neither is this song supposed to raise octaves. I did not feel too comfortable hearing it forcibly sung that way. The most important factor is that this higher octave singing isn't that good either. There was no feeling. If it's not sung by a woman around 30 or 40 years old who has experienced more in life, it becomes very difficult to express woman flower in a good manner, those are the reasons why. Teacher Yang said, but. Chang Sai also said, my soprano is. Zhong Yi waved his hand. Don't say any more, please go back. Please go back then. Although Ha Chichi could not understand Zhong Yi's decision but she still respected his views. But she was crying inside thinking, what a waste. Such an outstanding contestant yet she could not even pass the auditions. Just what kind of a person are you looking for? Chapter 649 An Absurd Voice The auditions continued. Although they had their differences in opinions, the auditions still had to go on. No doubt, the few judges, including Ha Chichi, all agreed on and felt that Chang Sai performed very well in every aspect and would qualify from here. But with just a disagreeing vote from Zhong Yi, she was eliminated. Everything still had to be done his way since he was the leader of this panel and the executive director of the show. It didn't matter that everyone else thought that Chang Sai was good enough if Zhong Yi did not think so. Zhong Yi said deadpan, next. Teacher Sun was about to speak, but hesitated, then finally swallowed his words. Next up was the promising second seeded contestant everyone acknowledged, Hu Liangyi. This person had been singing for many years and was trained in the performing arts, having graduated from a true music college. He had also appeared in many concerts and television programs, honing his singing along the way as a backup singer to several celebrities. His singing could be described as the real thing and would stand up to the test for sure. Hu Liangyi stepped up. Ha Chichi said, all right, you may begin. Hu Liangyi adjusted the microphone and said, I'll be singing, Mountains, for everyone today. The song was one of the more well-known ones in this world and was considered a fusion of traditional and pop music. It had a bit of bel canto mixed with traditional folk singing styles and would leave the listener in enjoyment. Hu Liangyi's voice was quite good and he could sing very steadily in a well-balanced way without sounding rushed. His voice could go high or low as needed. His performance was done in such a textbook manner, without any flaws they could pick on. It was just too perfect. The song was over. Ha Chichi was very excited. Teacher Sun, Teacher Yang, and the others also perked up at the performance. One of the music consultants even gave him a thumbs up and said, it's so different when it's a person of the performing arts. You sang well. Before he could finish his praise, Zhong Yi had already put down Hu Liangyi's CV and remarked, It's not up to my requirements, please go back. What? Still not up to requirements. 
even this was not okay? Hu Liang Yi immediately widened his eyes and asked, my singing is not good enough. Teacher Sun could no longer bear to listen any further. Director Zhong, if Hu Liang Yi and Chang Sai's performances are not good enough, then we should just scrap the auditions since no one could do better than them anyway. Teacher Yang said, we have all analyzed the strengths of the contestants and these two people are the most outstanding. Even if they might not have the champion's look, they would still be in the top 10 of any other singing talent show. Just what are your requirements? Isn't the bar set too high? Ha Chichi frowned and looked at Teacher Yang. She said, Teacher Yang, whether a contestant can qualify or not will be decided by Director Zhong. If he thinks they can't qualify, then he must have his considerations, so why are you being so outspoken? Teacher Yang replied, but I don't understand the reasons behind his decisions. Teacher Sun agreed, I can't understand either. Asking us to come participate and help with the selection, even though we might not be well-known or famous within the industry. We're still industry veterans, so whether someone can sing or not, wouldn't we know? These two contestants are obviously quite good, yet they can't even pass the auditions. I'm not doubting director Jong's professionalism, but when it comes to talent shows and singing, we are definitely professional about it. Zhong Yi looked at them and explained, first off, my new program is made not in accordance to industry standards, nor does it follow the standards of other talent shows. That is why, when I measure someone singing to be good or bad, I have a set of my own standards to judge them by. Second, Hu Liangyi's singing is not bad, but his voice is too common and he uses too many types of singing techniques, with some parts being rich. You guys might look at this as singing an unstage performing experience, but in my opinion, there is nothing special about it and no pouring of emotions into the performance. That is why I am not satisfied with the it. Third, you all claim to be professional, but I'm no amateur either. How this program will be done and how the contestants are chosen are all up to me alone. What I need is not an excellent contestant, but someone who is unique and irreproducible by any others. Teacher Sun argued, voice is too common. This is the first time I'm hearing of anyone using that as a judging standard. What's the point of using the uniqueness of a voice to make a judgment? I don't understand at all. In the end, it still boils down to the singing and unstage performing experience. Zhong Yi countered, the name of my program is the voice of China. Everyone's understanding of a good voice might be different, so I won't force that on anyone. But as I am the executive director, if you guys don't think that my requirements are better than yours and won't respect the principles and decision of my choices, then please, go back now. He said those words with a hint of malice. This was also the first time Zhong Yi was doing a program with such a headstrong attitude. When he was working on his new programs in the past, a lot of objecting and doubting voices constantly came at him. Each time Zhong Yi was hosting or planning a show, he would have to try to talk and persuade his leaders or colleagues, asking them to put their trust in him, convincing them that doing it his way would be for the best and why it would help to attract more viewers. But all that was unnecessary now that he was the leader of the team. He was the executive director, and having been doubted so often in the past, he was already tired and annoyed by it all. He was getting impatient about having to explain himself to others and instead thought, if you all don't respect my decisions, then I won't give a damn who you, 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 or you are. Just get the hell out of here. Wu Yi was extremely nerve-wracked. Director Zhong. Ha Chichi also tried to smooth things over. Director Zhong, the teachers were only just suggesting their opinions, this matter. If they did not have these music consultants, how would they be able to continue with the auditions? Fine then, I'll leave. Teacher Sun was so angry he stood up and walked away. When Teacher Yang saw this, he also felt his dignity had been compromised, so he stood up and left together with Old Sun, but not before leaving some parting words. Fine, I'll leave too. Since the program doesn't need the opinions of us professionals, it's pointless to stay around here. The remaining two music consultants looked at each other, hesitated for a bit, then also left. They knew they were only supposed to be here for a few days to help the program team of The Voice. But who knew that not only were they not appreciated, even their professional advice was refused. You don't want us to stay? Well then, we don't care either. We would like to see how well the program's viewership ratings turn out after its broadcast. 
how your so-called the voice will turn out to be. Talking about voice uniqueness? Irreproducible? Bullshit. Based on those requirements, it would be a miracle if you could even qualify a contestant. At this point, all of the music consultants had left the venue in anger and refused to work. Zhang Yi told Hu Liang Yi, please go then, I'm sorry. Hu Liang Yi could not accept the results at all and said just before he left, when the voice starts broadcasting, I will definitely watch it. I want to know what kind of a person would have passed based on your requirements. In terms of singing, Hu Liang Yi was extremely confident of himself. A person like him would surely have some pride in himself. Zhang Yi did not say a word. He was not against Hu Liang Yi at all and knew that his singing was indeed quite good. As to whether Hu Liang Yi would become famous in the future or have any developments in the music industry, Zhang Yi didn't know. But he knew there was definitely no spot for Hu Liang Yi on the stage of The Voice. That was something he was certain of. After quite a number of people had left, the venue of the audition became much quieter. Ha Chichi laughed bitterly. Director Zhang, how do we go on from here out? But Zhang Yi responded with a smile instead. He replied, it's just us from the program team left now, but that's also a good thing. Sister Chi, please call the next person in. We will continue with the auditions. Ha Chichi didn't know whether to laugh or cry. She could only continue with the auditions. The next contestant was not good either. The one after that too. Zhang Yi was becoming disappointed. How could there not even be a good one? Ha Chichi and the others from the program team were also feeling very unsettled. There were so many contestants who sang rather well, but why did Zhang Yi not like them at all? Almost half of the first batch of audition contestants had already left, but not one of them caught Zhang Yi's eyes. Just what kind of a voice would he accept as a good voice? Ha Chichi said listlessly, next. Little Wang announced to the outside, Qian Pingfan, Wan Zhong Yi clicked on this contestant's demo and played it. When Ha Chichi had it, she said to Zhong Yi, this girl has a very clear and crisp voice, and it carries a nice, melodious feeling. Overall, I would say it's not bad, but looking at her name, it looks oddly casual. I wonder what her parents were thinking when they gave her this name. At this moment, the contestant walked into the room. But when this person appeared in front of those in the room, they were all caught by surprise. Ha Chichi asked dumbfounded, and who might you be? It was a young man slightly past twenty who looked very ordinary, with short hair and a sense of style that was incredibly middle of the road. He wore a pair of shoes stained with mud, making him look like a simpleton who had wandered into the room. The young man looked very nervous and stammered, I, I, am, Qian Ping Fan. Ha Chichi nearly fainted. You're a guy? Qian Pingfan scratched his head. Yi yes. The song demo Ha Chichi received only had the candidate's name and contact number filled out. Other than that, they did not have any more details about the person, just like this contestant standing in front of them. Ha Chichi was simply in disbelief. She said, the demo you sent to us was clearly a girl's voice. Do you know that you cannot simply take the place of a candidate and come in here for the auditions? Qian Pingfan anxiously replied, that was sung by me. TD2 Wu Yi said, please go back. Qian Pingfan was getting very anxious and tried to say, I, I really. We only request for our contestants to be honest. I don't know who sang in that demo, but from your attitude here today, we clearly see a problem with you already. Ha Chichi was of course not going to believe that such a clean and crisp female voice had come from a man. Besides, this person was speaking with a very normal voice that belonged to a young man, so how could he be the owner of the voice in the demo? Qian Pingfan was finding it difficult to explain himself as he continued insisting, that was really sung by me. Ha Chichi directly said, Little Wang, call for the next contestant. But at this moment, a slightly disappointed and dejected Zhang Yi suddenly spoke up, wait a moment. Then, he looked at the contestant and said, why don't you introduce yourself a little first? That person immediately answered, My name is Qian Pingfan and I'm 22 years old this year. My hometown is in Shaanxi, but I'm currently living in Beijing. My occupation is, I repair bicycles with my master over at Lishuikiao Station. We repair bicycles for others over there. What? Repair bicycles? Everyone. 
Zhong Yi, seemingly not too interested about his occupation, began adjusting the volume louder for the demo playing on the computer. He pointed and asked, Are you sure that this was sung by you? Qian Pingfan gave a firm nod. Yes. Ha Chichi doubted, You must have used voice changing software, right? No, I really didn't. Qian Pingfan argued. Zhong Yi was becoming much more interested. He stopped Ha Chichi and the others from raising any more doubts and told Qian Pingfan, All right then, can you sing something for us? Seeing this chance, Qian Pingfan was also feeling excited. Sure, sure. I'm going to sing Wishing We Last Forever. Perhaps he had the thought that this song would get him into Zhong Yi's good books, but being rather bashful, he could only constantly shake his head in embarrassment, though he did not change his chosen song and determinedly went ahead with this opportunistic song. Actually, he had changed it to this song only because he had overheard the other contestants discussing it as a strategy, in hopes that it would increase their chances of passing the audition. Zhong Yi looked at him. Begin. Qian Pingfan took a deep breath and was about to sing, but lost his composure. Holding his chest tightly, he took another deep breath to suppress his nerves before his voice came out. When the first verse was sung, all of the staff at the audition venue were dumbfounded. When will the moon be clear and bright? With a cup of wine in my hand, I asked the clear sky. In the heavens on this night, I wonder what season it would be. Little Wang's jaw dropped. We also looked like he had seen a ghost. Ha Chichi and the others were all staring at the contestant in disbelief. Holy shit. It was a female voice. It really was a female voice. Qian Pingfan sounded quite normal when he spoke, but when he started singing, it somehow turned into an extremely soft and gentle female voice, a voice that could be described as more womanly than a woman's voice. He did not lie. The sample sent to them was really sung by him. It was sung by a man. If they did not know that the microphone and speaker were untampered, Ha Chichi would definitely have thought that his voice was going through some voice changing software. Right now, she felt her world had collapsed as she looked at Qian Pingfan's face while listening to his singing voice. She would never have thought that there would be such a person even if she were threatened with death. Moreover, the key point that also left Ha Chichi wondering was how she did not find it too shocking. If the contestant did not sing well or did not sing like a woman, or even deliberately imitated a transvestite's type of voice, Ha Chichi would surely break out in goosebumps and not get used to it. But somehow, this Qian Pingfan singing was just too womanly, as though his voice had been switched with a real woman's. On top of that, he did not have any sort of expression that made him look like he was forcing the emotions of the song to show. The look and demeanor of her unconfident simpleton earlier had now turned into one of concentration and unembarrassed confidence, as he held the microphone and sang. It felt very natural, and perhaps that was why Ha Chichi did not find it so shocking. Very quickly, the performance was over. Qian Pingfan put down the microphone and pulled himself out from the song, becoming a shy guy once more. He would turn his head here and there, touching his nose a little and looking like he did not know where to place his arms and legs. Ha Chichi rubbed her forehead and could only muster up, Oh my god. Wu Yi gazed at Qian Pingfan like he was a fairy. Qian Pingfan was getting embarrassed from all the looks he was attracting. Teachers, if it's not okay, then I have to get going. I came out today secretly and did not inform my master. Zhong Yi laughed, then you better be prepared to go back late today. Qian Pingfan was taken aback. Why? Zhong Yi answered, because you'll need to fill in some forms and we'll have to brief you on the details of the competition rules, and what to look out for during the recording of the show. When those words were said, everyone was astounded. Zhong Yi looked at him and complimented, Congratulations. You've passed the audition. He finally found one. This was exactly the type of voice this bro wanted. Chapter 650 Why'd you get an old man here for? He passed? A contestant finally passed the audition? Everyone in the program team were stunned by Qian Pingfan's voice, but at the same time, were even more stunned by director Zhong's decision. Qian Pingfan also felt the same. He was so surprised he asked, What? I qualified? Zhong Yi smiled and said, Yes. Qian Pingfan pointed to himself, eyes wide. Really? Me? 
Yes, really, you, Zhong Yi replied. This, I, I, I thank you, thank you, teacher Zhong. Thank you, teachers. Qian Pingfan was speaking incoherently due to his excitement. He had come to the audition because he wanted to change his life and had a dream of becoming a star. With the hopes of giving it a try, he downloaded a singing app onto his phone and recorded a short demo that was just average in quality, and sent it to the program team via email. Who could have guessed that they would inform him the very next day of the auditions, and right now, he was even told by the famous Zhong Yi himself that he had passed the audition. This excitement was simply indescribable with words. Zhong Yi asked, did you bring your ID? Yes, I brought it. Qian Pingfan quickly replied. Zhong Yi called a staff member over and got him to take Qian Pingfan to register himself and then brief him on the preparations for the show. After doing that, Zhong Yi was also unable to conceal the joy he felt. Having held auditions for almost half of the contestants for the first day of open calls, none of them were satisfactory to him and lot of time was wasted. But just the appearance of Qian Pingfan alone was enough to make up for it all. This was exactly the type of good voice he was looking for. However, Ha Chichi was unsure of what was going on. She said, Director Zhong. Yes? Zhong Yi looked at her. Ha Chichi said, about this, he doesn't have any professional music training and has never been on stage before. He's just a bicycle repairman. Will it be fine to put him on stage and on television? Zhong Yi replied, our program's motto states that we don't judge looks or occupation. Because of how several of those music consultants were chased away earlier, Ha Chichi was also very careful with her words. She delivered, but I personally feel that even though Qian Pingfan's voice is very unique, wouldn't it also be considered a little odd? He's a man who sings in a woman's voice. Will the audience accept that? Of course, even though I think it's acceptable, we do not know if the audience will accept it. That voice will be too controversial. Wu Yi added, it's literally unheard of. Another female editor also nodded. Yes, that voice is truly an odd one. Zhong Yi smiled and explained, that's exactly what I'm looking for in the contestants. It's good that Qian Pingfan has appeared. Using him, I can finally show you all a live example of what I'm looking for. In terms of voice uniqueness, emotions put into singing, and the irreproducibility of it all, Qian Pingfan demonstrates all of those characteristics quite well. That is the type of contestant we should be looking for. I am not afraid of controversy, in fact, I'm afraid we aren't being controversial enough. Something all audiences can agree on and accept does not exist at all. Then he reaffirmed his decision, regarding Qian Pingfan, we will put our focus on him from here on out. Ha Chichi could only nod at this. Okay. Zhong Yi said, next contestant. Little Wang went out to call the next contestant in. One contestant. Two contestants. Another six contestants in a row were eliminated. When the next person after that came in, everyone was left confused for a moment. It was a young man in his twenties, with rather tanned skin and a very tall build. He was a burly man who couldn't be described as ugly, but was just normal looking and a very average person. That person went to the microphone and spoke into it, My name is Sun Da Xuan and I am a train driver. Ha Chichi asked, What song will you be performing today? It's called, Please Fall in Love with Me, Sun Da Xuan answered. When they heard the title, everyone's expressions turned strange. Please fall in love with me? This was an old song from more than a decade ago. It was one of the famous songs by a Greater China One celebrity. Although this celebrity was no longer popular due to his works not catching on, and also hardly appeared on television and entertainment news anymore, the song's popularity was still very widespread. Even now, this song would be a default choice when people went to sing at a karaoke box. As it was meant to be a slow and soothing love song, none of those present at the audition expected such a burly man to choose it as his performance piece. Zhong Yi said, Begin then. Sun Dashuan cleared his throat and narrowed his eyes, then lightly began his singing. Hey, hello, it's me. Hey, please, love me. Sometimes it sounded gentle. Sometimes it meandered. Sometimes the vibrato was strong. And, sometimes, it was deeply soulful. If this song were sung by any other pretty boy or a younger-looking man, the image would surely be beautiful, 
with young love an especially harmonious scene. However, with the looks of this son Dashwan who was a train driver, it was a total mismatch to the lyrics of the song. Although his singing was very emotional and flawless, the image that they were looking at gave them a really odd feeling. It didn't match, or maybe it couldn't be said to not match, but rather was too much of a contrast. The only thing worth mentioning was that this person was really owning it today. When they listened to his demo, they only felt that his singing was very soulful and emotional. But when he performed it live in front of them, those feelings intensified. Along with his confidence in performing, he even looked quite comfortable standing there in the center of the room, though they didn't know if he was exceeding his usual performance levels or if he had always been at this level. He finished singing. Sun Dashwan looked on at the judges helplessly. Harchichi looked to Zhong Yi and asked, What do you think of this person? Zhong Yi returned, What do you all think? Harchichi laughed, Should I speak the truth? Then would you rather tell some lies? Zhong Yi was tickled by this. Well, I think it's fine. There's not much of a stage presence, no celebrity feel, probably not someone who would become famous. Although, I do think that the love song was performed very well, Ha Chichi answered. Wu Yi said, not too bad. A female editor said, it's okay. They were actually quite hesitant of Sun Da Xuan, knowing that it wouldn't matter whether they passed or failed him. If they compared him to Chang Sai or Hu Liangyi's level, they would definitely not let him pass. At least, if they were the judges, they would choose Chang Sai and Hu Liangyi rather than him. The reason for that was because their mindset was still stuck in the traditional thinking. If a person's looks passed and they had the X factor, then even if their voice was average, as long as they could sing well enough, those would be the points they used to judge. For someone like Qian Pingfan who was male but sang in a female's voice or this burly train driver's gentle and emotional love song, they still could not quite accept it. But somehow, for whatever reason, Zhong Yi's views always differed from theirs. He only said one thing, being able to sing a love song is not easy in and of itself. Sometimes, a man compared to a woman, a burly person compared to a pretty face, when the former of each sings well, they carry much stronger emotions across to the listener. So I'll let him pass. Ha Chichi. Fine, whatever, you're the executive director anyway. If you say so, then so be it. The program team staff were already feeling helpless about Zhong Yi's decisions. They gradually understood Zhong Yi's routine, which could be summarized into two words, seeking novelty. The more they believed a contestant could not make it, the more Zhong Yi thought they could. Following that were another series of auditions. One after another, contestants entered the room, performed a song, and left the room, over and over again. A couple of times, when Ha Chichi and the other program team staff thought they had spotted a promising contestant, Zhong Yi rejected them all. This left everyone unsure of what to say as it seemed like Zhong Yi specifically preferred those who worked blue-collar jobs, did not have good looks, or had odd voices. He didn't look for any other qualities than those. For other talent shows, the preliminary auditions had a good passing rate as they still weren't the televised auditions yet, so it shouldn't be too stringent. As long as a contestant was average, they would be let through to the next round. When they got to the next round where the blind auditions were held, the difficult decision of whether they were good enough or not would be left to the four coaches. At most, they would have to edit out any footage of those contestants who were really terrible but somehow managed to sneak past the preliminary auditions. Why would they need to be so strict in the preliminary auditions round? They could not understand it. As they were nearing the end of the day's auditions, they knew that if this were any other singing talent show, more than a dozen contestants would have already passed, yet what was the number for them? They had only let two contestants through. And they were even the extremely odd ones. But Zhong Yi still went about doing things his own way and did not lower his selection criteria. Actually, he understood clearly that they needed to find some contestants who were good looking and could sing well or others who were not as outstanding, just to make up the numbers. But at the same time, Zhong Yi also knew that such contestants were not difficult to find at all. For example, you could throw a brick into a crowd and easily hit someone like Chang Sai or Hu Liangyi, so his main task right now was not to search for these green leaf contestants who could easily be found. Since he was spending time here at the scene of the audition today, he prioritized finding those contestants who would serve as the red flowers of the program. 
the program team staff thought that Zhong Yi was being capricious and lacking consideration, but little did they know that he considered much more than any one of them had. He already had it all planned out. Time was ticking away. Finally, at around 3 p.m. in the afternoon, other than Luo Yu who was brought here by Zhong Yi, there was only one last contestant for the day's audition. Ha Chichi said, the next person is the last one. Zhong Yi nodded in acknowledgement. The door opened and the last contestant entered. The moment they saw this person, everyone had a vision of 10,000 lines of, what the F asterisk asterisk K, flying in front of their eyes. When the program team requested for the contestants to submit their demos when applying for the auditions, they were told to include their self-introductions as well. But if they did not write it or forgot about it, there was nothing the program team could do. This was why the program team was quite clueless about some of the contestants' details, just like how this last contestant for the day turned out. No one could have expected it at all. The person who entered the room was an old man. It was an old man who must have been around 60 years old. Half of his hair was already white and combed all the way back. He was wearing a rather fashionable leather jacket and a pair of jeans full of holes. His jeans weren't torn from age, rather deliberately styled that way. Ha Chichi gaped, flabbergasted. Grandpa, are you a contestant too? The old man answered in high spirits, yes, my name is Ju Danian. A female editor asked dumbfounded, may I ask how old you are? Ha ha, I'm 59 this year, still young, still young, Judanian chuckled. Wu Yi nearly fainted at this, wondering how 59 years old was still considered young. My father's only 58 this year. He already has symptoms of cerebral thrombosis and struggles to walk around. You're even older than my father by a year. Ha Chichi could not believe it. She asked, was the demo sent in by you? Did you sing that? Ju Danian replied with vitality, that was me all right. But the demo was for a rock song. Ha Chichi could not accept it. When she had a look at the contestants' waiting room earlier, she remembered seeing him, but did not think of him as one of the contestants. She just thought that he was a family member of a contestant who might have been underage and felt that he might have been a father or a grandfather but who knew that this old man who was almost 60 had indeed turned out to be here for the audition. However, Ju Danian only laughed and spoke, the song I will be performing for you all is a rock song too, may I start now? Ha Chichi said, sure, sure, please go ahead. Little Wang felt a little bad for him, so she offered, Grandpa, why don't I get you a chair? No need. I'm still strong and healthy. Ju Danian held the microphone, and without even preparing, suddenly roared into it. Wind. Whoa. Everyone was shocked at the opening. The loud and hoarse voice had set the entire venue on fire as the female editor pressed her hands over her ears while Ha Chichi and the others, started in their seats. It was not because they were shocked by the loud voice, but because they were afraid that this old grandpa would get a brain hemorrhage, or a heart attack from his own shouting. This was a rock song. Can an old man like you take it? Don't risk your life like this. But Ju Danian was just getting into the mood. Wind. Gusting all around. Snow. Squalling till it's gone. Rain. This was a little known song barely any of those present had ever heard. It could be considered an older rock song, one that carried a bit of heavy metal in it. It was basically a rock song that depended on the vocalist to employ Screaming 2 to sing the song. It could be seen just how hard Ju Danian was trying. In just a short while, his forehead was dripping with beads of sweat. Ha Chichi was already in no mood to listen anymore. She wanted to go up to call a stop to it as she was worried that, before the voice could even start broadcasting, news of a contestant dying of cardiac arrest would make the headlines first. But somehow, Zhong Yi was listening to it in a most serious manner. Not only was he serious, his eyes appeared increasingly brighter by the moment. This old man really sang very well. Although his voice sounded somewhat dry and the high notes cracked at certain parts, it didn't matter since it was rock and voice cracking was allowed. Other than those points, the old man did not have any other problems in his singing and was even quite remarkable. His outburst of emotions was full on and almost every verse of the song poured his feelings out. 
Of the song's rhythm, it might not seem difficult to a younger person nor was there anything to pick on, but for a 60-year-old man, John Yi was more particular about the contestant's sense of rhythm. He felt that this contestant had done very well in this area and was definitely comparable to the young ones. In fact, parts of the lyrics and high-pitched singing, if sung by a younger person, would have just been that. But when it came out from the mouth of a 60-year-old man full of life experience and wisdom, it sounded particularly different. The impact of those lyrics was much greater. It was more intense. What a surprise. This was really another unexpected surprise. This rock song sounded better and better as they listened. When the performance was over, Ju Danian was panting heavily, though he looked to be fine and still in high spirits. He said, Teachers, did I do well? Do I qualify? Zhong Yi suddenly asked, How is your condition and health? Ju Danian answered, No problems at all. Don't try to brush it off. I want to know the specific conditions you have, Zhong Yi said in a serious and firm voice. Ju Danian replied honestly, I do have slightly high blood sugar, but other than that, I'm doing well. My blood pressure is stable and I've been jogging every day to increase my lung capacity. Ha Chichi didn't know how to react. Grandpa, you're already so old, why do you still think of coming to take part in this talent show? If we had known you were already at this age, we wouldn't have asked you to come to the auditions. Wu Yi was already thinking of getting him to hurry back home. Seeing him rocking to a song like this, they were all trembling with fright that he would just faint right there and then. Ju Danian was having none of it. So what if I'm at this age? I'll tell you something, young lady. Why don't we compete on our lung capacities? I believe that many of you here would not be stronger than me in terms of our lung capacities. Ha Chichi did not know how to react to this, she just knew they had to reject him. Have you ever seen any other talent show with a 60-year-old contestant before? Wouldn't this be crazy? Although their program did say that age didn't matter, it was possible to be too old as well. Someone in their 40s would have been fine, someone in their 50s would be pushing it, but you're already close to 60 now and half your hair has also turned white. Who would risk letting you compete in their talent show? No matter how you put it, it was still ultimately a stage for the youngsters. How should they reject him? He's already at such an advanced age, so would it be all right to tell him as it was? But he looks so confident. If they straight told him, would it deal a blow to him? He had better not get a heart attack from the rejection. Whatever, the dirty work of rejecting the old man should just be left to Zhong Yi to handle. He's the executive director anyway. Ha Chichi kept quiet. The other program team staff all looked at Zhong Yi. Sure enough, only Zhong Yi stood up to say something. He told the old man, Grandpa, you're much older than my father and our competition is really quite physically demanding too. I think you'd agree you can't handle it. Ha Chichi nodded inside her head. Right, just refuse him mildly and not be too direct with the rejection. Ju Danian immediately responded, physically demanding? It's no big deal to me at all. I'm still going strong, and whatever a youngster can do, I can do it too. I have never once thought that I'm older than any of you, so no matter how intense the competition gets, I can get through it. It's not a problem at all. Oh come on, you're still refusing to take our advice. This old man was being too stubborn. Ha Chichi and the others were all wondering, if Director Zhong's mild rejection did not get through to him, then how should it be handled? Was it better to just put it plainly to him? As expected, Zhong Yi gave it to him very plainly. Zhong Yi stayed standing and said with a smile, Grandpa Ju, since you claim that your body is fine and that you can get through this intense competition, then I have nothing else to say. I hereby formally announce, you've passed the auditions and I insist that you join our competition, the Voice of China. On behalf of our program team, I welcome you. Ju Danian stumbled back a bit and immediately broke out into a big smile, I've qualified. Ha ha ha. However, the program team staff were all astounded. They were so shocked they felt like just laying down on the ground under the tables. What? The old man qualified? What the f asterisk asterisk k? Ha Chichi nearly vomited blood. Wu Yi and the other staff's eyes shrank. Director Zhong, weren't you going to refuse him politely? Yet it turned out that you were not going to reject him. 
it turned out instead to be that you were only asking the old man to be clear about his condition and health issues, before allowing him to proceed to the televised blind auditions round? But, but this is an old man who's 60 years old. Have you ever seen an old man taking part in any singing talent show before? We're holding selections for the voice of China, not the old man of China. What sort of mess are you trying to create by getting an old man to join the competition? Chapter 651 I teach physical education. The old man was taken away to fill out some forms. Left at the scene of the audition were a group of people from the staff of The Voice, all looking shocked. Hachichi could no longer just sit around and keep quiet anymore. She knew of Zhong Yi's temper and also knew that he was the executive director. Even if all the decision making in passing or failing a contestant was up to him, she still had to say something about it, because if this was not handled properly, it could turn out to be a very serious problem. She asked, Director Zhong, are you really serious about letting the grandpa onto the show? Why don't you reconsider? That really isn't doable. He's too advanced in age. If anything happens, the people responsible will be those of us at Central TV. You should know that Central TV Department 1's broadcast coverage is nationwide and even airs on some overseas channels, so this pressure is not something that everyone can take. I've even seen many youngsters who look very healthy and strong faint during program recordings due to anxiety. This has happened so many times just in Central TV alone, and they're even young people, so let's not mention what would happen to a 60-year-old grandpa. Wu Yi wiped away his sweat. Yes, Director Zhong. Assistant Director Zhongs were also came over to the audition venue after finishing his work. When he heard that Zhong Yi had let a 60-year-old grandpa through the auditions, he too very nearly fainted. He hurriedly stepped forward and said, Teacher Zhong, you must never, ever, ever do that. If something happens, then it will cause big trouble. Zhong Yi laughed, that's why I asked him about his health first. Ha Chichi immediately interjected, he might have said that he is all well and good, but that doesn't guarantee anything. Aren't there exceptions? Jongs were said in panic, we can't take such a risk. Tha that's really too dangerous. What's so dangerous? Are you all taking the elderly to be too weak? Zhong Yi disagreed. I agree that being cautious is correct, but an elderly person is still a person. They have things they like as well as dreams to chase after. No one has the right to take that away from them. You guys have seen it for yourself too, the grandpa isn't in bad shape at all. He's still very strong and able. How could he perform a rock song like that otherwise? So why don't we not take Grandpa Ju to be just the typical old man, all right? Ha Chichi replied, but there's never been any case of an old man on a talent show before. When she said that, many of the program team staff at the side couldn't help but snigger. John Yi chuckled. If other programs don't have that, then we'll have it. The programs I make have never aimed to be the same as others. To me, there's no difference whether it's an old or a young person. Since we've already said that we would not look at their ages, then we shouldn't judge them based on that. Ha Chichi. Zhong Zhuo. No one else said anything. Zhong Yi added, I don't see a problem with Grandpa Ju. In fact, I think we should give him more focus. I believe that all of you were too concerned with his age earlier and did not listen to his singing, right? Grandpa Ju's style of rock, that scream, that attitude to life, those are all things a young person can't express through their singing. The feeling it gives to me, can only be described as shocking. It was that great. Hachichi wondered, was that so? I didn't notice it. Wu Yi and the others also weren't listening attentively back then. That performance was recorded. I'll show it to you all again later. Zhong Yi said, but for now, let's not talk about it. We'll just settle it this way. With those words, it didn't matter if there were any more objections. Ha Chichi, Zhong Zhui, and the others could only look at each other helplessly. They knew better than to say more. Whatever, if it's settled, then it's settled. We'll just do it however you decide, hi. Qian Pingfan. Sun Da Xuan. Ju Danian. In the first round of the preliminary auditions, three people had qualified for the next round. At this time, Ha Chichi thought of someone else who had come. She said, Oh right, Director Zhong, didn't you bring a woman here earlier? Is she a contestant too? 
How's she? Zhong Yi smiled and answered, You'll know when you hear her sing. Little Wang blinked. Then, should I? Call teacher Luo in, Zhong Yi said. Little Wang went out to get her. She knew that this person was brought here specifically by Zhong Yi, so they might have known each other beforehand. Because of that, Little Wang was more polite to Luo Yu than she was to the other contestants. The door opened. Luo Yu walked in with a gust of wind following her, because she was fat. Faced with a contestant like that, with looks that wouldn't have passed most auditions, the program team's staff no longer cared anymore as they were already numb to it. In the past, they used their own understanding and expectations when it came to such kinds of auditions. But today, after Zhong Yi had overturned their cognitive understanding over and over again, they were no longer bothered by any surprises. Even if a mute person walked in now for the auditions and was given a pass by Zhong Yi, they wouldn't have any reaction. Because to them, Zhong Yi's criteria for picking a contestant was really not something that they could understand at all. Luo Yu looked to the left and the right, then said, Teacher Zhong, what now? Zhong Yi said, Oh, you may begin singing now. All right then. Luo Yu did some warm ups by flexing and stretching her arms, and then by kicking out her legs a few times. Zhong Zhuo. Ha Chichi was wondering to herself what was up with this person. Warm ups? But these warm ups were too much, weren't they? Were you getting ready to sing or to throw a shot put? Does singing require this kind of warm-up? All the other staff also came to a conclusion. As expected, it was another odd one. Other contestants might clear their throats or do some light singing to open up their throats. But Luo Yu was different from other people. Due to her profession as a physical education teacher, she was more used to such a way of warming up. Perhaps for her, this was a way to relieve the stress, to move around a bit more to take the edge off and get into the best condition. So whether she was going to sing or throw a shot put, this had always been Luo Yu's standard warm-up routine. Exhaling, Luo Yu said, the song I want to sing is, Wishing We Last Forever. This song again? There were already four or five people who had sung this song today. No one said anything and just sat there quietly, ready to listen. They were curious about how different this contestant who teacher Zhong Yi had brought would be. Then Luo Yu started singing. When her voice came out, everyone immediately understood how she was different from all the others. When will the moon be clear and bright? With a cup of wine in my hand, I asked the clear sky. In the heavens on this night. It turned out to be such a raspy and rough voice. The roughness and friction that her voice brought out gave people goosebumps. This woman was actually singing in an old man's voice. Luo Yu's voice was the direct opposite of Qian Pingfan's voice, although still with some differences. Qian Pingfan was a male singing in a female voice and his singing was much better than a woman would have sung. But Luo Yu was different, her voice was very deep and very rich. It sounded like a male voice yet there was still a hint of a woman's charm in it. On top of that, the emotions in the voice were no doubt a woman's. As long as their eyes were closed, they could still tell that it was a woman singing, only that her voice was somewhat rough. Ha Chichi gave a long sigh. I knew it, I just knew it. Wu Yi also face palmed himself and rubbed his forehead for a long time. Why? Why was it all these kinds of people? Teacher Zhong, can't you find someone normal? Just one will do. A man singing in a woman's voice, a burly man singing a soft love song, an old man rocking it out with his performance, a woman singing in a man's voice. This was a competition of who was the strangest. But Zhong Yi quietly listened in appreciation, as though he did not notice the speechlessness of those around him. He really liked Luo Yu's singing, not only because of her extremely unique voice, but also the way she handled the song. Even if her voice was raspy, she was able to keep the softness and delicate feel of the song and expressed it in her own way that was different from others. Voice, singing, emotions, all of these were flawlessly expressed. It was like an uncut piece of jade, devoid of any complex singing techniques but leaving people very comfortable listening to it. This was what you'd call a good contestant. In the future, for whichever coach chose her, she would definitely be one of the key members of that team. Yes, even Qian Pingfan and Zhu Danian were the same, but as for Sun Dashuan the train driver, he still wasn't quite as good compared to them, but he was still good anyway and would definitely pass the blind auditions. 
On this first day, for seeded contestants had qualified. Looking at the statistics, it might look like a poor qualification rate, but Zhong Yi was already extremely satisfied with the outcome as he had uncovered some gems. To him, the numbers did not matter. What was important was their quality. If he had wanted to just make up the contestant numbers, he could easily get it done, but to have found these red flower contestants, it was really one in a million. Each and every one of them were treasured finds. And just like Zhong Yi had predicted, although there were some differences in this world's recognition of what a good singer was, there were still some good voices in it. There were still talented people around, which made Zhong Yi hopeful and expectant of many hitherto undiscovered prospects. Right now, Zhong Yi could finally thump his chest assertively, knowing that the voice he had brought over and reproduced from his previous world would really have no problems at all. Luo Yu finished singing. Everyone stayed silent for a long time. Luo Yu seemingly got hooked on her own singing, even suggesting to do another one. Why don't I give woman flower a try too? Zhong Yi laughed and said, Teacher Luo, there's no need. I hereby announce that you have passed the audition and qualify for the next round as our fourth seeded contestant. Congratulations! Luo Yu said happily, Then I, does that mean I can appear on television then? Zhong Yi gave her confirmation. We will be starting the program recording in some days. With regards to Zhong Yi's decision this time, Ha Chichi and the rest did not find it surprising at all. They knew at this point that they just had to go along with whatever Zhong Yi decided. But hearing Zhong Yi's words, Ha Chichi got a hint of surprise and immediately asked, Director Zhong, this teacher Luo is? From a school? Or? Hearing Director Zhong address her as a teacher, Ha Chichi's first thought was that it was her profession. Zhong Yi affirmed, yes, she's from a school. She's a teacher of a relative of mine. A real teacher? That's great. When everyone in the program team heard this, they finally managed to regain some of their composure. A music teacher from a school, no matter what, would still be considered a professional musician. At last, there was a professional, even if her voice was a little, well, regardless, at least she had given the program team a shot of confidence. Compared to those other contestants who had qualified, Luo Yu's profession as a teacher was really comforting and reassuring to know. Ha Chichi casually spoke, Teacher Luo, you'll still have to teach normally, won't you? Our program recording schedule can take up to a day sometimes. Hopefully it won't delay your classes and inconvenience the students. Luo Yu laughed and replied, I'm not too busy usually. Jongs was smiled and said, that's true, a music teacher has a lighter workload than a teacher teaching the sciences. Hearing that, Luo Yu was taken aback. Huh? What music teacher? Ha Chichi was also a bit stunned. Aren't you teaching music at the school? Luo Yu nearly fainted. What? I teach physical education. Ah? You teach physical education? Everyone, hash dollar percent carrot and asterisk. Teacher. A respected teaching professional had finally joined the competition, but how the f asterisk asterisk k did it turn out to be a physical education teacher? At this moment, only the image of a beautiful creature called the grass mud horse one could be used to describe everyone's feelings. They could no longer see the future of their new program as it became enshrouded in pure darkness. Chapter 652 The Four Wonders Later that afternoon, after the first round of preliminary auditions ended, Zhong Yi gathered Ha Chichi and the others and started going through the demos sent to them with email. Although today's audition had ended, they were still going to have another round tomorrow or the day after, and thus needed to sort out the contestants to notify them to come for the auditions. For those candidates who lived further away, if they really had the potential to qualify, the program team would have to be responsible for their plane or train tickets, covering their return trip as well. Come, everyone have a look at this. I will be in charge of these 100 candidates. Leave this page to me. All right, if there's any demo that's good, let me know. I'll listen to it as well. Hey, Teacher Jong, this one sounds good, come and listen. Let me take a look. Will this person do? Sounds quite good, notify her. Director Jong, I found one who's quite good as well. Coming. 
they kept busy for a full two hours and only managed to go through about a fifth of the applications. There was nothing they could do about it as there were far too many candidates. If it was said that people did not have much optimism for the Voice of China before, but after landing the Brain Gold title sponsorship and with the four famous music coaches coming aboard, the applications increased several fold. It was an unprecedented number three or four times more than those of other similar talent shows. This was due to the fact that none of them ever had such a prestigious lineup of coaches and such an astronomical title sponsorship fee. The first move made by The Voice of China had already cast all thoughts of other similar talent show programs far from the minds of the audiences. Ring, ring. A phone call came in. Zhang Yi answered. Director Jiang. On the line was the deputy director of Central TV Department 1, Jiang Yuan. He said, Little Zhong, why did I hear that you have chased away four of the music consultants I appointed to your team? Zhong Yi laughed and replied, Director, it wasn't that they were chased off, it's just because we did not see eye to eye with the concept and requirement, so they were not of much help in the picking of contestants. Since it was that way, I thought that it would be better to just handle it on my own. At most I will have to attend every round of the preliminary auditions and spend a little more time. It's not a big deal. Jiang Yuan could not say anything to that, so he just told him, all right then, I won't be bothering with this matter then. But I'll still say the same thing, I want results, and that means the viewership ratings. Zhong Yi said, I understand. How many people qualified from today's auditions? Jiang Yuan asked concerned. For contestants, Zhong Yi said. Jiang Yuan reacted in shock. So few? Zhong Yi said, but they're all the most excellent ones. Jiang Yuan said, fine, I will just wait for your good news. After hanging up, Zhong Yi looked at his watch and gathered everyone again. He said, let's stop here for today, it's about time to leave anyway. Thank you for your hard work, everyone. Who? It's no trouble. It's our job, Director Zhong. Everyone could finally take a breather and relax as they got ready to leave work. Zhong Yi was a workaholic and in other times, he wouldn't even be getting ready to knock off at 7 p.m. Sometimes he would even work until 8 or 9 p.m., but today, he was the first to leave. Twenty minutes before the official end of work time, Zhong Yi had already left. This was because there was still a little one waiting for him at school. He had to rush to the experimental primary school to pick up Chen Chen. If he were late, she would surely be unhappy. When Zhong Yi left, everyone started talking to each other without needing to hold back anymore. Zhong's was sighed, tell me honestly. Do you guys think that these contestants can make it? Wu Yi gave a forced smile. I don't know, but I suppose teacher Zhong has his own considerations. Ari, I don't know what to say anymore. Ha Chichi said while pinching her brow. I just hope it works out by some miracle. Having said that, even she did not believe that this miracle would happen. Everyone was looking at each other with worried faces. Some of the program team staff even had expressions that seemed to say, we're screwed. With regards to the chosen contestants today, everyone had great doubts. They'd seen odd ones, but never such strange ones before. Qian Pingfan. Sun Da Xuan. Ju Danian. Luo Yu. These four wonders, each one more amazing than the other. After work. The lights in the office of the Voices program team blinked out as everyone dispersed and proceeded downstairs. In the elevator, assistant director Zhongs were bumped into a friend from his previous program team. The two of them had known each other for quite some years now. That person greeted, Old Sway. Zhongs was said, Ari, it's old you. That person asked, How's it going? Have you finished busying yourself with the equipment work yet? I heard that your program team has spent more than 20 million on purchasing new equipment. Jongs was said, yeah, we bought a bunch of equipment. They should be delivered within the next two days. That person said, hey, your team is really rich, but that can't be helped with a 100 million title sponsorship. Even if you all just spent it recklessly, it would take a long time to deplete those funds. Just look at the program team that I'm in, they're so petty. We only exceeded the budget by tens of thousands of yuan, but the leader has already curbed our spending with immediate effect. We're not as lucky as your team, getting whatever you want. 
Then he paused before suddenly asking, oh right, didn't they hold auditions for your program today? When he heard that, John's was expression changed into something slightly unnatural. He replied, ahem, yeah, I guess it was. That person asked, what do you mean by, I guess it was? How did it turn out? How many good ones were there? When I walked past the venue earlier, I spotted a very pretty one. She was dressed in red and had big, round eyes. Did she get through to the next round? Jongs was said, no. That person asked, then which ones did you all choose? Jongs were mumbled, I'm not in charge of that, so I'm not too sure either. That person didn't believe him. You're an AD. Even if you weren't in charge of that, you would still know something, wouldn't you? Jongs were coughed, I really don't know. Elsewhere. Below, at the bottom of the television station tower, Wu Yi ran into an old colleague from his previous department. That woman greeted, Wu Yi, you're off work. Yes, Wu Yi said. The woman asked, you all held auditions today, right? Wu Yi said, was there an audition? I'm not sure. The woman rolled her eyes. Who are you trying to bluff? The entire Central TV staff knows auditions for The Voice were held today. It was even reported on the news. Hurry up and tell me a little about it. How many people were chosen? How did they do? You should know that I love watching singing talent shows the most, right? So how were the contestants you all chose compared to the contestants from the other satellite channels? Wu Yi suddenly said, A, hey, you bought a new pair of shoes? Yeah, they look good, right? Hey, I was asking you about the contestants. Why did you talk about my shoes instead? The woman was almost at a loss for words because of that. Wu Yi lied, I'm not sure, I wasn't at the venue. Somewhere else. Little Wang got on her bicycle and was preparing to ride it home. Behind her, one of her university schoolmates came up to her. They had graduated together and come to Central TV to work at the same time, so they'd always had a pretty good relationship. Wanga, I've been looking for you the whole day. Ah? Looking for me? I wanted to ask you about the auditions. I'm really curious. Ah? Does your executive director John really not choose the contestant based on their looks and only listen to their voices? What do the contestants who qualified for the next round look like? Did you take any photos? Show them to me. Ah. What are you hesitating for? I'm asking you, did you get any behind-the-scenes videos? Show them to me first. Recently, there have been so many people who pay attention to this new program of yours, even many of us in Central TV are guessing what kinds of contestants you all selected. Just today alone, I've heard seven or eight people discussing it in the office. Ah, uh, about this. Weren't you at the venue? Tell me about it. No, I can't. Director Jong has told us to keep it confidential. F asterisk asterisk K, what's there to be so secretive of? I really can't say. Just tell me a little, won't you? We're close friends, aren't we? Ahem, uh -huh, I really cannot. Well, then, I'll go off first. See you tomorrow. Hey, you. Wait, wait. Why are you rushing off? The same situations were playing out for every staff member of The Voice. At the moment, there were a lot of discussions about The Voice. The internal staff at Central TV were also very concerned and curious about how the program was progressing. Some of them even wanted to go and observe the auditions, but due to regulation, Non-related staff were not allowed to enter the venue. As such, without an answer to their curiosity, they could only wait until it was time to knock off to find someone they knew from the Voices program team, whether it be friends, ex-classmates, or ex-colleagues, so that they could get an update on the status of the program. But without exception, none of them managed to find out anything. Not one of the staff members from the Voices program team leaked any news or information at all. It was as though they had all discussed beforehand to keep it a secret. Some of them even acted dumb by saying that they were not present at the auditions even though they were there. Did they really not know anything? Did Zhong Yi really ask them to keep it a secret? Actually, there was nothing like this at all. When did Zhong Yi ever ask them to keep the details of the audition under wraps? 
as long as no video clips leaked, why would such small matters require them to keep it a secret? However, no one said a thing. Not a single person. Because the staff of the Voices program team basically did not dare tell anyone. They were too embarrassed to do that. Tell them? Nonsense. How should they tell them? Your sister. Look at the singing talent shows on all the other satellite channels, including those that aired in the past 10 years. Counting all of them, which one did not have contestants who were either handsome guys or beautiful women? Which one of their contestants were not in the peak of their youth? Pretty boys. Pretty girls. They were everywhere. But for their chosen contestants from the preliminary auditions? A bruiser. A skinny and ugly man. A woman weighing between 80 and 90 kilograms. And there was even an old man. But that was not the weirdest yet. The weirdest things about these people were their occupations. In the other talent shows, what did the handsome guys or beautiful women do for a living? They were either students from a music college or musicians who had graduated from performing arts schools. There were music teachers, piano teachers, guitar teachers, backup singers, independent musicians who composed their own songs and even rookies who had just signed with a media agency. They had either already debuted or were working in music-related jobs as industry insiders. Their professional quality was for all to see. However, when you looked at the chosen contestants for The Voice, a train driver, a physical education teacher, a bicycle repairman, and there was even a 60-year-old retiree. How could they compare? How could they say anything? When comparing their program with other programs, the contrast was vastly different. Even if they were thick-skinned enough, they still would not have dared tell anyone about the backgrounds of their program's contestants. If they did, they would surely become laughingstocks. Chapter 653 Countdown to the Recording Two days later. The second round of preliminary auditions began. Contestant number one, please come forward. The eyes of the program team staff lighted up, but immediately turned to size. Harchichi scanned her over. Please introduce yourself. The young woman said in a crisp and clear voice, Hello, teachers. My name is Yuan Tong and I'm 24 years old. My occupation is, I guess you can say that I'm a white-collar worker. White-collar. Harchichi repeated. Yuan Tong said, Yes, I work at my parents' company. Oh. An affluent second generation, Wan Harchichi said, All right, you may begin now. Yuan Tong smiled and said, Then I will be performing, blooming. Da, Da Yuan Tong was lightly snapping her fingers to create a rhythm. After a few beats, she started to sing softly and her beautiful voice resonated. Flowers bloom on the windowsill. But you aren't here. Remembering that spring, when you were still beside me. These petals and your smiling face. With a sudden change from her soft singing, she launched into a soprano. The flowers have bloomed. But I'm crying. She could reach a very high pitch and still have her singing sound full without much vibrato in her voice. Her lung capacity was also very good as she held the notes for a long time without fading, so that was something worth mentioning. The song ended. Yuan Tong bowed and then said, I finished performing. Harchichi also felt that she was really good. She was beautiful, had a good aura, and sang well, but regrettably, she had come to the wrong place because their executive director was unlike other people. If this were a different program, the producers would definitely be fighting for her to be on their show. Unfortunately, their executive director preferred those who didn't look good, had vocal deficiencies, and worked low-level jobs. Hi, what a waste of a promising contestant. As a result, Harchichi said, I'm sorry, you did not meet our requirements. Yuan Tong was a little surprised. The other staff members of the program team already understood what made Zhong Yi tick. They knew that if it were someone they fancied to be good, Zhong Yi would definitely not bat an eyelid at them. Wu Yi also said, please go back. Helpless, Yuan Tong could only reply, thank you, teachers. But this time, Zhong Yi was dumbfounded. Please go back for what? Ha Chichi looked at him stunned. Ah. Wu Yi and the others also stared blankly at him. Zhong Yi was baffled, so he asked, 
this contestant sang very well, so what's there to question? Of course she has qualified, what do you all mean by not meeting the requirements? What kind of standard do you all have? He even sounded a little angry at them. This bro had it so difficult trying to make this program work, yet you guys weren't only not helping me, but instead making me even busier? When Harchichi and the others heard that, they nearly vomited blood. Didn't you dislike such contestants? Why did your attitude suddenly do a 180? Harchichi said, then what about Chang Sai from before? Zhong Yi remarked, which Chang Sai? Oh, I remember. That contestant didn't hold a high pitch stabler than her and is also not as beautiful as her. We definitely need more focus on good-looking contestants who can also sing well. How did it end up with you all trying to eliminate her? Then he turned to the young woman and said, you've qualified for the next round. This was the contestant Zhong Yi was most satisfied with today, although her singing wasn't exactly the best. But it was still considered quite outstanding already. At least compared to the train driver of the Four Wonders, her singing was a bit better. The key here was that she was also very beautiful and good-looking, so that too naturally qualified her as a key contestant. Yuan Tong was so delighted it showed. Thank you, Teacher Zhong. Can I also make a small request? What is it? Zhong Yi asked. Yuan Tong said, I would like your autograph. The two songs you wrote for teacher Zhong Yuanqi have always been my favorite songs. I play them on repeat every day. Ha ha, that's great. Zhong Yi did not say anything and just have her his autograph. Ha Chichi and the others looked at each other. They finally understood that their auditions were never based on fundamentals or criteria, that there were no rules for whether a contestant performed below standard in this area or did well in another area. Whether they qualified or not, was all down to the executive director alone. If Zhong Yi said they met the requirements, then they met the requirements. If he said they weren't up to standard, then they weren't up to standard. Ari, in meeting such an executive director, this was as difficult as it could get. Everyone on the program team thought that Zhong Yi chose the contestants based on his mood, but in fact, that was not true. They had arrived at such a conclusion simply because Zhong Yi had a different way of looking at things than them. Ha Chichi and the others were not exactly professionals in the field of music and could only be considered observers. They were only looking for someone who, ideally, was good looking. Or they liked a performance because of their own subjective tastes, while those music professionals who had been asked to leave were all looking at singing skills or if the contestants were from a performing arts college but they were too traditional in their judgment of a voice and could not accept voices that sounded new or odd to them. It could be said that these two groups both had their limitations. Compared to them, Zhong Yi looked for something much complexer. When judging a contestant, he was looking for their overall qualities, whether they could sing well or not, uniqueness of voice, whether their occupations were worth hyping, and even if the contestants could become subjects of conversation. These were all the factors Zhong Yi was considering. He rejected good looks. Who said so? If the contestant could sing well, had an extremely unique voice, and was especially beautiful, only an idiot would reject her. It's not like you could find such a contestant if you went out to specifically look for one, so why wouldn't she qualify? Half a day passed. The second round of preliminary auditions ended. Zhong Yi inquired, it looks like several of the candidates we picked as potential contestants did not turn up. Why didn't I see them? There were a few candidates whom he was rather looking forward to meeting based on their demos. Ha Chichi answered, they did not come. There's one who needs to go to school and does not have free time, while another one needs to work overtime. Although I did mention that our program team would reimburse the cost of her return flight, the entire trip and audition would still take two days minimum. She probably feels that her work is more important and did not want to risk taking time off since she might end up getting rejected by us as well as losing her job. Her boss at her workplace must be a really difficult person to deal with. They were finally seated in front of the computer again, sorting through all the demos that were emailed to them. The number of applications was getting increasingly higher by the day, but the quality of the candidates was not as uniform as the increase. There were hardly any good ones. Zhong Yi thought for a long while before finally deciding to change the way the auditions were held. He would hold the auditions just like how the original the voice of his previous world held them. 
Sister Chi, how about this? Tomorrow, we will hold one more round of preliminary auditions here. Then after that you will choose some staff members, and send them to various key cities in the country to carry out the additional preliminary auditions. If there isn't enough manpower, we can hold the preliminary auditions one at a time in each city, otherwise we will hold them simultaneously across several cities. Harchichi was taken aback by this suggestion. Won't that cost a lot of money? If we need to mobilize an entire team, the hotel accommodations, audition venues, equipment, and publicity will all cost money. Zhong Yi said, I'll allocate 5 million to you first. Will that be enough? Ha Chichi suddenly became more spirited and she readily agreed, sure. See, money talks. They had seemingly forgotten that their program had a production budget of over 100 million and was unlike the other talent shows on rival satellite channel stations that scrimped and saved on every penny. The voice did not want for money at all. Wu Yi said worriedly, Director Zhong, if we expand the auditions to cover so many places, then without you leading the selection, how will we know which contestants qualify? Zhong Yi delegated his authority and replied, as long as you all find them to be good, just send them my way. Those contestants I previously approved are all going to be the seeded contestants and the ones I like best. They are the red flowers of our show, but the only reason they can be that is because they will have some green leaves to make them stand out. So I want to reassure everyone a little here. Don't worry too much about who is good or bad, as long as you all unanimously agree they are good, send them my way. We'll sort them out after we know the number of contestants who passed. Those words reassured the team a lot. If they really had to apply Zhong Yi's selection criteria in choosing the contestants, they wouldn't know how to judge at all, since no one understood his selection criteria. Zhong Yi asked, Have you already found the music arrangement teachers? Ha Chichi nodded. Director Jiang has arranged for two music arrangement teachers and a band to be transferred to our program team, but there won't be a music director or music consultants due to that day's insight. Zhong Yi understood. There's no need for a music director. It will only be more troublesome with them around. We only need the music arrangers. Regarding the already qualified contestants, inform the music arrangement teachers to start helping them with their song arrangements today. Otherwise, once the number of qualified contestants increase, they will become too busy. For those seeded contestants I mentioned, I want to spare no effort when it comes to their arrangements. They must be done to perfection. As for the non seeded contestants, of course, we will still do our best for them, but make the appropriate adjustments. Harchichi said, I understand. Zhongs were came over from the other side. Director Zhong, all the new equipment has been delivered. Zhong Yi immediately brought everyone to the recording studio and had a look around. Then he said to Zhong Zui, Has the design for the custom chairs been confirmed yet? Zhongs were replied, We've already placed an order. I've also hounded the workshop for progress. They are currently rushing the job, but because this design has a certain degree of difficulty to make, they told us it would take half a month at the quickest. How about the stage? Zhong Yi looked to the stage which was piled with construction materials. Zhongs were answered, we are setting it up according to your request. We started working on it yesterday. As for the contestants' waiting area and the second studio, the workers have also started work on it. Zhong Yi urged, hurry up. Try to get it done as soon as possible. Zhongs were said, I understand, I'll get them to hurry. How about the website? Zhong Yi asked. The staff member who was in charge of the website details immediately answered, Director Zhong, the website has been completed after we worked on it overnight, the latest news, promotional news, and other related information can be added onto the website at any time. Well done. Zhong Yi said, have we contacted the publicity department yet? A female editor responded, I've already contacted them. Central TV Department 1 will allocate a total of 75 seconds of promotional airtime to us. How we use this 75 seconds is up to us, but other than the weekend primetime slots, we are free to choose whichever time we want to air it. Zhong Yi nodded. Then we will make them 15 seconds each. Each of the four coaches will record a video clip. We'll also do a group promo with them. Every aspect of the program's production was progressing very quickly and already put into motion. 
As of now, the countdown to the recording had already began. Chapter 654, Arrival of the Voices theme song. On this morning. The freshly published morning newspapers went on sale. The Voices Nanjing auditions overwhelmed by applications. A 100 million title sponsorship, is it worth the money? Results of a public survey, less than 50% of the public thinks that the voice will do well, with more than half of industry insiders and the public still doubtful. Zhang Yi appears at Shanghai's audition venue yesterday for a promotional campaign of The Voice. Can The Voice possibly overcome the industry downturn of talent shows? The singing show industry faces a crisis, plagued by signs of fatigue. Overcrowded market for singing talent shows attracts strict control from overseeing authorities. The Voice to become final straw in an overcrowded singing talent show market? The entertainment headlines of various newspapers and online news were all giving continued coverage and tracking of news concerning the voice of China. Even though many people did not think that the voice would achieve much in the viewership ratings, since it was a mega-scale production costing a large sum of money to produce, along with the addition of the Heavenly Queen to the coaches list, the 100 million renminbi title sponsorship fee, and being John Yi's reputed production, this topic was naturally more widely discussed. The media was certainly more than willing to report about it. There was no lack of news in the entertainment industry but a sustainable, news-generating program like The Voice was missing. With the appearance of The Voice, it could be said that it helped thousands of journalists keep their jobs, no longer would their mothers have to worry about them lacking news to write about. Past 7 a.m. Shortly after Zhong Yi sent Chen Chen past the school gates, he received a call. It was Zhong Yu Enchi. Where's my song? What song? Zhong Yi replied instinctively. Old Jong said, you're asking me what song? The song you owe me. Didn't you say that you would write a theme song for The Voice? Well, give the copyright to me and we'll be even. Only then did Jong Yi remember that he made such a promise some days ago. Since he still owed Old Jong a song, and The Voice was in need of a theme song too, he decided to simply just write a song for Old Jong that could also be used as the theme song. But he had been too busy recently, flying to Shanghai for the preliminary auditions and a promotional campaign, then flying back on the same afternoon, and rushing to pick up the child from school. With so many things to handle, he had already long since forgotten about this matter. He immediately said, oh, 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 about that, how would I forget? I've been writing the song for the past few days and even stayed up for a few nights over it. He bluffed his way through. Old Jong said, is that so? Zhong Yi replied, of course, I definitely keep your matters in mind. Old Jong said, then have you finished writing the song? Zhong Yi said, yes, I finished writing it. Old Jong said, okay. Zhong Yi said, when you're here at Central TV, I'll pass you the score and then the four of you coaches will have some rehearsals to sing it. After the recording is done, we'll then use it for the intro theme song of the program. After hanging up, he drove towards Central TV. When he reached the recording studio, he started another busy day of work. With one hand, he was remotely controlling several auditions being held at other provinces while with the other hand, he was giving instruction for the stage layout and planning the progress for the presentation of the promotional clips. The recording of the promotional clips for the four coaches were done in succession. The edited clips of Zhang Xia, Chen Guang, and Fan Wenli were thus the earliest to be put out and broadcast to the public on Central TV Department 1, with each clip lasting 15 seconds. Due to Zhong Yuanchi's busy schedule, her recording had only been completed yesterday. As old Zhong had the biggest reputation among the coaches, her clip certainly had to be broadcast with the best timing. All of these matters had to be arranged and planned by the executive director, Zhong Yi, just like everything else here that also needed his attention. As for the executive producer, Fu Sihong? Except for the beginning when Fu Sihong objected several times to Zhong Yi's proposed plan for the voice, there were no signs of Fu Sihong appearing around here after that. Central TV Department 1 had sent Fu Sihong to supervise the team. As long as production was on track with no issues, Fu Sihong would not need to meddle in anything. It did not matter to Zhong Yi whether Fu Sihong was here or not, but without him here, Zhong Yi could afford to do his own job even better without any apprehension. Lua. Director Zhong, you're looking for me. Is the voting system ready? One, we haven't ordered it yet. 
it's not needed yet, right? Even though it will be only used in the finals, don't delay. Get it done quickly. Understood, I will contact them and order immediately. We can borrow it from the other central TV program teams if they have prepared systems. Little Jew, little Jew, come over here for a while. Ari, Director Jong, I'm here, I'm here. The 75 seconds of promotional airtime that Central TV allocated to us will certainly not be enough. Get in touch with other media, such as those large video hosting websites, and buy some commercial airtime from them. Sure, I'll get it done. Don't be afraid to spend money. Buy more. Ah? Aren't we running low on money? Even if it's low, we still have more than 10 million renminbi. For other talent shows, 10 million renminbi might already be their entire budget for production, but this amount is just the leftovers of our budget, so there's no commercial we can't buy. Advertising is the most important activity of all. We must make sure to successfully get across the concept of voice to let the people understand and accept it. To achieve all these, it's never too much no matter how much we spend. I understand, Director Zhong. Please wait for my good news. Zhong Yi had to keep everything under control so he had to handle every detail diligently. As he had already been appointed executive director for about 10 days, he was becoming more and more like one now. Brimming with the air of an executive director, he spoke increasingly firmly, assigning tasks with greater clarity. Zhong Yi was also growing together with the production progress. This role as executive director was very important to him as it was a very valuable experience for his future success, and irreplaceable with any amount of money or popularity. One of the reasons why Zhong Yi accepted Jiang Yuan's offer to join Central TV Department 1 was because he was promised that he could be the executive director of such a big production at an important channel like Central TV Department 1. He needed this sort of life and work experience. This growth would give him a foundation for future endeavors. Compared to when Zhong Yi was the executive producer and director of Zhong Yi's talk show, it wasn't the same level. The talk show only had Zhong Yi himself on stage since it centered around him as the host and the main focus of his performances. His role as the executive director was just in name and would not compare to directing a large scale talent show on Central TV. Time passed quickly. It was already noon. Zhong Yi had a quick and simple lunch before returning to continue instructing the production. Suddenly, assistant director Zhongs were walked hurriedly into the recording studio to where the stage of the voice was. Director Zhong? A. Eh? Where's director Zhong? Little Wang pointed somewhere not far away. He's installing the chairs with the workers. Zhongs were exclaimed and ran over in a hurry. Ayo, hey director Zhong. Why do you have to handle this yourself, just leave it to the workers? Only then did Zhong Yi reluctantly put down the chair and tell the workers with a worried voice, don't place the four chairs too far from each other. Put them slightly nearer so the coaches can hear each other without the microphone, a bit closer, yes, okay, that's good now. This guy was a perfectionist. The word, adequate, didn't exist in his dictionary, so it developed into a bad habit of his. Zhong Yi was never comfortable if he only left it to others to do the work. Zhongs were said, Director Zhong, they've arrived over there. Zhong Yi turned around. He panted, who have arrived? He dusted off his hands. Zhongs were blinked and replied, Sister Zhong and the rest of the coaches have arrived. Should I bring them over or will you be going to the television station tower? Zhong Yi was taken aback. The coaches? What are they here for? Zhongs were helplessly expressed, you were the one who arranged it. Didn't you say a few days ago that you were writing a song and wanted the four coaches to come in this afternoon and do a simple rehearsal of the intro theme song? Have you forgotten about it? Ah? Was it today? Holy shit, I was too caught up in work. No wonder old Zhong called me so early in the morning to ask me about the song. Zhong Yi nearly fainted before he recovered, they're already here? Zhongs were said, yes, they've already arrived. Let's do it this way, don't let them come over here first. Try to stall them and make them wait a while, Zhong Yi immediately stated. Zhongs were became confused. Why? What should I say to them? Zhong Yi answered, just tell them that I'm not around and then bring them over after half an hour. Having said that, 
Zhong Yi quickly walked away. Where's the music arrangement teacher? Where's the music arrangement teacher? Little Wang said, he's helping the contestants with the arrangements. Zhong Yi hastily ordered, tell him to put that on hold for now and to come look for me. Ah. Okay. Seeing Zhong Yi so anxious, Little Wang double-timed and went to get the music arranger. In a recording studio. Zhong Yi went inside with a youthful music arrangement teacher. Director Zhong, why are you in such a hurry to find me? The music arrangement teacher wondered, are we going to do the music arrangement for the theme song? I'll arrange the music first and then let the four teachers sing it. Zhong Yi did not say a word. The music arrangement teacher said, then can you give me the score? Let me have a look at the song first. Zhong Yi remained silent. At this moment, the music arrangement teacher finally realized something and was shocked. You, could it be that you have not written it yet? Weren't we supposed to have the rehearsal today? John Yi coughed, we can still make it if I write it now. The music arrangement teacher nearly fainted at this response. Holy shit, you really didn't write it. What kind of song do you think will be most suitable as a theme song? John Yi made a hasty last minute effort to do something about it. The music arrangement teacher didn't know what to say. But haven't the four coaches already arrived? It's too late to write the song now. Actually, there are all kinds of theme songs for these types of talent shows. But I personally think it's best to be in line with the theme of the competition, like how to express one's dream, something inspirational, so that it can easily blend into the talent show's atmosphere and highlight the contestants and stage. Besides, such songs have to reflect positive energy and have a sunshiny feel, so it shouldn't have any lyrics that talk about a reflection on life or words like that. That would complicate things and make it less outstanding. I guess that would be suitable as a theme song. Dreams? The stage? Positive energy? Contestants? Talent show? After hearing that, Zhong Yi nodded. Do you have a pen and paper? The music arrangement teacher was stunned, then looked around for a bit before handing one to him. Zhong Yi immediately picked up the fountain pen and started to write the lyrics on the paper. As he wrote it, he spoke, I'll sing it once for you now, so help me write the score and arrange the music as well. The music arrangement teacher said dumbfounded, why you have already thought of a song? F asterisk asterisk K. It's only been a few seconds. I had just finished describing what kind of song was suitable for the show. At most around 10 seconds after that you have already finished writing it. That's impossible. The fastest lyrics writer in the industry would not have a speed like yours, even if you multiplied their speed by a hundred times. No one could be this fast. He did not believe it, but he grabbed an empty score and got ready to record it. The next second, Zhong Yi started to sing with his terrible singing, I wanna fly to the sky, walk beside the sun, the world waits for me to change it. Never been afraid of others seeing my dreams. Here, I can make it happen. Laughing loudly, let's walk side by side. Isn't happiness everywhere? Casting off all worry, I stride forward bravely. Now I am taking center stage. The music arrangement teacher was dumbfounded. You really could write it out in a little more than 10 seconds? What the f asterisk asterisk k? Are you on stimulants? Chapter 655 The Speed of Zhong Yi's Songwriting Zhong Yi sang and the music arrangement teacher wrote out the simplified notation one on the fly. Once. Again. A long time passed. After singing and going through the song several times, the notation was finished and the lyrics were added in, completing the song. Perfect. Zhong Yi hands trembled as he held the score. The music arrangement teacher was also fatigued and profusely sweat. He wiped the sweat off his forehead and asked, Teacher Zhong, can we do this ahead of time in the future? Rushing like this is really scary. Our program team has spent a lot of money to invite the four coaches to join us with figures that even the public might not know about. If they find out, it will surely cause an uproar. The four coaches are big shot celebrities in the music industry and we were the ones who arranged for them to come over today. If we were unable to produce a song for them to rehearse with, it would have become very embarrassing for us and make it look like we thought they were fools. They were not ordinary celebrities. 
If they turned hostile and threatened to not record the program or rehearse the song, their program team would be in big trouble. Zhong Yi pretended it was nothing, then just smiled and said, but we managed to finish it, didn't we? The music arrangement teacher had no words in response. Indeed, this song only took 20 minutes to finish, but excluding the time taken to compose the simplified notation, Zhong Yi had only taken less than a minute to write it. It felt like he finished as he was writing and singing. The music arrangement teacher could swear that, in all these years he had worked in this industry, he had known countless lyricists and singer-songwriters, when it came down to songwriting speed, Zhong Yi was absolutely ranked number one among all the people he had ever met. At this moment, he looked at Zhong Yi full of admiration. He only started writing the song when the coaches were already at the doorstep, yet he still managed to finish writing the song. In the entire industry, only Zhong Yi would risk doing it this way. Other than him, no other person could achieve it. No one would believe this even if it were revealed, but whoever did would surely have to bow down to him. As for the quality of the song, the music arrangement teacher had not really listened to it carefully yet. First, he was in too much of a rush trying to fill in the simplified notations and his mind was not focused on the melody and lyrics. Second, Zhong Yi's singing ability was just average, nothing special. Third, it would be difficult to judge just from hearing him sing without music and instrumental accompaniment. Outside, someone was knocking on the door. Dong dong dong. Before Zhong Yi could say anything, the person had already pushed open the door and come inside. It was Deputy Director Zhong Zhuo who said anxiously, Director Zhong, I can't hold them back anymore. The four teachers can't wait any longer and are already making their way here to look for you. Zhong Yi nodded. It's been hard on you, Brother Zhong. Zhong Zhuo had really put in a lot of effort to make up lies and find excuses to delay them, but the four coaches were all big shots and extremely famous, and even the least popular among them was a national bell canto singer. Every one of them possessed a great aura, so it was considerably stressful for him to deal with them tactfully. At this moment, some voices came from outside the corridor. Little Zhong? It was the voice of Grandma Zhong Xia. And then he seemingly heard Zhong Yuanqi asking someone, Miss, where is your executive director? That female staff exclaimed and then muttered, I don't know either. Zhong Xia said, I know he must be here, ask him to come out. He scheduled us to be here for the recording and we're already here, yet he's avoiding us. It's almost been half an hour, so why has he still not shown himself? Zhong Yi hurriedly walked out the door while holding the score. He looked to the end of the corridor and walked up to them, laughing. Grandma Zhong, Sister Zhong, Brother Chen, Sister Fan, you're all here already? Chen Guang said in a speechless manner, we arrived long ago. Zhong Yuanqi looked toward where he came out, then smiled and said, so you were hiding in there? Zhong Yi said, no, I wasn't hiding. It was just that something had cropped up suddenly over here, so I couldn't get away. Turning to Zhong Zui, he pretended to be angry and scolded, Brother Zhong, why didn't you inform me that the teachers had already arrived? If I knew they were here, I would have dropped everything and gone to receive them. What can be more important than the teachers? Zhong Zui could only think to himself how he was told by Zhong Yi to delay them, but he just said, I'll pay attention to this next time. Zhong Yi reminded him, next time if the teachers come and look for me, make sure to inform me immediately. Look, I very nearly got misunderstood by the teachers this time. Zhong Yuanqi looked at him. But I don't think it's a misunderstanding. Zhong Yi coughed. Zhong Xia criticized, you were too much. How could you let us sit around and wait for more than 20 minutes? At least you should have given us the score to take a look at first. Zhong Yi also felt a little embarrassed, since he was the one who arranged the meeting yet he totally forgot about it. It was unacceptable. Grandma Zhong, you're right. This time, it's my fault, so you can just blame me. Fan Wenli blinked. Becoming sharper, she asked, is there some problem with the theme song? Zhong Yi immediately let out an uncontrolled laugh and started lying without any guilt, how could there be any problems? Actually, I've already finished writing it, and it took me a whole week to perfect it. The lyrics and melody were carefully deliberated and meticulously scrutinized upon. I've already made it into absolutely, the most exquisite song among songs. Here, see? The score is right here. I've been waiting for all of you to arrive since long ago. 
spent a whole week. Meticulous. Scrutiny. Carefully deliberated. The music arrangement teacher stared in silence at the ceiling. Zhang Xia and the rest of them walked up to him. Is that so? Let me take a look. Zhang Yuanqi took the score from him. Chen Guang and Fan Wenli also stood beside her and looked at the score. They started humming along to the lyrics, I wanna fly, to the sky, walk beside, the sun. As they were unfamiliar with this song and had never heard it before, their humming was also intermittent. They were only reading the simplified notations as they hummed along but it didn't sound too coherent. At this moment, the music arrangement teacher was also seriously savoring the song for the first time, since he did not listen to it earnestly before. Fan Wenli was a music teacher in the past and had previously taught students to sight-read music scores, so she was skilled in this area and adapted much faster than the others. She was the first person to sing the song in its completed form. Never been afraid of others seeing my dreams. Here, I can make it happen. Laughing loudly, let's walk side by side. Isn't happiness everywhere? Casting off all worry, I stride forward bravely. Now I am taking center stage. On seeing Fan Wenli singing so fluently, the other three coaches stopped their singing and listened quietly to Fan Wenli singing the entire song. The more they listened, the more their expressions changed. Zhongzhuo was the first person to be shocked. He did not know music, nor melody changes, nor treble and bass. He only knew this song was very nice to listen to and was the type of work that could make people excited after listening to it just once. Moreover, the lyrics were also very encouraging. The dreams people have, they can make it happen here? Wasn't that exactly the message they wanted the voice to portray? Didn't they want to provide the platform for people to realize their dreams? This song matched perfectly. The next person to be shocked was the music arrangement teacher. Originally, he thought Zhong Yi was only messing around as he had no choice, but to randomly write a song because the four teachers had already arrived at their doorstep. He felt that the quality of the song couldn't possibly be any good, because how good could a song that only took one minute to write be? To even be able to write it out was already a miracle. But when the music arrangement teacher finished listening, he knew that he was wrong right from the start. This song was too awesome. How could this be a haphazardly done piece of work? Honestly speaking, if the music arrangement teacher had not witnessed Zhong Yi composing on the spot, he would not have believed what was unfolding in front of him no matter what. It was written so quickly, had a high quality, a good tune, and was even in line with the concept and vision of the program. The music arrangement teacher knew that what had happened today was truly an eye-opener for him. Fan Wenli finished singing the song. Chen Guang had long since forgotten about the displeasure at waiting for half an hour for Zhong Yi. He even gave a thumbs up to Zhong Yi after listening to the song. Zhong Xia nodded furiously in appreciation. Great song. Fan Wenli was also very satisfied with it and commented, this song is really tailor-made for the program. Teacher Zhong really took great effort in crafting the lyrics and melody. Zhong Yi laughed gently while waving it off. That's not true, though I did use eight or nine days to write it. Chen Guang lamented, you're already so busy with stage and preliminary auditions, yet you took the time to finish writing such a good song in just eight or nine days. Teacher Zhong Yi's talent is indeed extraordinary. Zhong Yi smiled and said, no matter how busy and tired I am, it's all part of my job. I'm the executive director after all. But suddenly, Zhong Yuanqi, pinching the score, slightly rubbed the last parts and asked, why is the ink on this score not dry yet? Upon hearing that, Zhong Yi broke out in cold sweat. Fan Wenli came up and took a look. Oh, it's really not dry yet. Zhong Xia also reached out to touch it and then looked at Zhong Yi. Little Zhong, you got your people to hold us back and delayed us for more than 20 minutes. Could it be that you forgot to write the song and ended up writing it only just then? Chen Guang stared with eyes wide. Ah? This song was just written? Zhongs were also jumped up in fright as he knew that Zhong Yi had asked him to hold back the four teachers for a reason, but he did not expect this to be the problem. The music arrangement teacher also did not know where to look, so pretended to have not heard anything. Zhong Yi immediately answered, How is that possible? How could I have forgotten such an important matter? I had already finished writing the song long ago, 
but after discussing with the music arrangement teacher earlier, we found there were some problems with the notes on the score, so we got it changed. Then, then we copied it again. That's why the ink was still wet. Chen Guang found fault with his words. Didn't you say you had already written out the score earlier and was busy with other things just now? Ah. Did I say that? Zhong Yi said. Fan Wenli also exclaimed, you can't really have just written it last minute, could you? In only 20 minutes? How can that be? I got my team to write a song with a specific set of requirements, yet the quickest they could do it in was still more than half a day. The quality isn't even guaranteed to be good. Zhong Yi made up another story. That's why I didn't forget. Zhong Xia exposed Zhong Yi's secret to the husband and wife, Little Zhong is best known for his fast songwriting speed. At the last spring festival gala, the song, Woman Flower, was written in the blink of an eye. At most, it only took a minute or two. Zhong Yuanqi smiled and chimed in, it's the same for, wishing we last forever. Although the lyrics were written by him earlier, the music was composed by him on the spot. It didn't even take a few minutes. Chen Guang. Fan Wenli. It was only then that they found out that Zhong Yi had such stories surrounding him. Could it really be that Zhong Yi had waited until they were right at the doorstep of Central TV for the song rehearsal before he took his time to compose a song for them? If that was so, then speaking from a certain angle, he was truly a god. Chapter 656 The Little Leader of the Program Team. Afternoon. In the music recording studio, the four coaches started familiarizing themselves with the song. Zhong Yi got the music arrangement teacher to stay behind and found another two staff members to come over to help with setting up the equipment. Then he finally said, you all can start rehearsing. I need to leave first as there are a lot of things to handle at the stage. Zhong Xia put down the score. Wait a moment, little Zhong. Ari, Grandma Zhong, what is it? Zhong Yi asked. Just now, when we arrived, we heard that there are contestants who've already qualified from the preliminary auditions and are secretly rehearsing, and having their songs arranged over at the other studio? Zhong Yi said, yes, they started rehearsing a few days ago. The main issue is with the screen time. It's impossible for every song to take up four or five minutes, so we had to make appropriate adjustments. Besides, every one of them is a talented singer, so they have higher standards for themselves. Likewise, our program has high expectations of them. That's why the songs have to be rearranged to suit them. The workload for that is very heavy. We've been working on it several days now so that everyone can get a once-over of the process. Zhong Xia requested, after we've finished rehearsing this song, we want to take a look at the contestants. Zhong Yuanqi did not have this request, as she was standing apart from the others, taking a call which was probably work-related. Zhong Yi blinked a few times. All of you are so busy. Why would you all want to see them? They are still in the transitional phase, so you all won't be able to see much anyway. Fan Wenli smiled and replied, what Grandma Zhong meant was that we would like to have a look at the conditions and quality of the contestants. The rumors in the media and outside world are rife with the preliminary audition process, with so many of them irrelevant and baseless. So we'd like to see for ourselves to understand the situation regarding the contestants in order to mentally prepare for the recording, with them. Chen Guang agreed, yes, I'm really looking forward to seeing them for myself as well. Zhong Yi shook his head and rejected, no, that's not allowed. Chen Guang asked, even we aren't allowed to have a look. Zhong Yi said, that studio where they are rehearsing is a secure environment. Other than our own program team staff, no one else is permitted to enter. We'll just stand far away and watch for a while. Zhong Xia said, do you think that we would leak information? Zhong Yi waved his hands. I really cannot allow that, Grandma Zhong. If you saw them now, there would be no more suspense. When the program's being recorded, there won't be the impact of seeing the contestants for the first time either. They tried to argue about this matter for a little longer. But Zhong Yi did not agree to their request. There wasn't even room for negotiation. Actually, at this moment, no one knew what the final presentation of the voice was going to be like and the sort of stage setup the program was going to have. The kind of lighting? The kind of contestants? The hosting style? 
nearly everyone didn't have a clue, including the program team's staff. The only person who knew was Zhang Yi. As the executive director and overall producer of The Voice, he knew what sort of news to release to hype up publicity and the sort of news that needed to be kept confidential. There must be some suspense. Everything could only be revealed on the day of the program's recording and not a day earlier. They were just like important cards held in Zhong Yi's hand. If he used them up too early, it would become meaningless. Outside. After he came out of the music recording studio, he quickly headed toward the stage of the main recording studio. As the four teachers were already veterans in the music industry, he was only responsible for providing the song and could not help in any other way. The moment he left, text message appeared on his cell phone. D.I.D.I. Old Jong, where did you go? She was probably done with her call. Zhong Yi replied after reading, I left. Have to help out in the main recording studio. Old Jong, this song doesn't count. Write me another. Zhong Yi was confused. Why doesn't it count? Old Jong, it doesn't suit me. Zhong Yi typed, He, this song isn't divided between gender or age. If you don't like it, I'll give it to someone else. I noticed Chen Guang's eyes were gleaming when he listened to the song, but since he heard I had written it for you in advance, he didn't try to snatch the song away. Old Zhong, I'll keep this song, but you have to write another for me. Zhong Yi replied, Impossible. I endured so much pain just giving this song to you. Are you treating my songs like they are cabbages you can get from the market for next to nothing? This is art and needs to be treated with great care. Anyway, I don't have any songs available now. We can talk in the future if there's a suitable song for you. Let's stop talking. I still have a lot to do here. There were no more replies from her after that. Zhong Yi exited from the messages interface and saw two missed calls. One was from an hour ago while the other call was half an hour earlier. As he just caught up with work, he hadn't heard them. Both calls were from Chen Chen's physical education teacher, Luo Yu. He thought for a moment and decided to call her back. Do do, the call connected. Luo Yu said, Teacher Zhong, you finally called back. Zhong Yi said, What's the matter, Teacher Luo? You were looking for me. Luo Yu said, There are no classes in the afternoon today at Experimental Primary School. All the parents have already picked their children up, but I saw that Chen Chen was still at school, so I guess that you probably forgot about her. When I tried calling you, you didn't pick up either. In the end, I decided to act on my own and brought Chen Chen to Central TV along with me. I am rehearsing with the music arrangement teacher in the studio now, but I've handed Chen Chen over to A.D. Ha Chichi. They're over at the stage area. Zhong Yi exclaimed loudly, Ayo, how absent-minded could I get? I forgot it was Friday today. Thank you very much, Teacher Luo. Sorry to have troubled you. It's nothing, I was coming to Central TV anyway, Luo Yu said. Then I'll go look for the kid. Zhong Yi hurried up and headed to the main recording studio. At the recording studio. Dust filled the air. This place was not much different from a construction site right now because Zhong Yi had requested that the stage and the audience seating undergo a major overhaul. Everyone was very busy with their tasks. Without any effort, Zhong Yi found Chen Chen immediately. He saw the little kid standing in the middle of the crowded stage, waving her small arms around like Zhong Yi and taking charge of the current work. Little Wang, why are you on your cell phone again? Chen Chen said in her childish voice. Little Wang almost cried at this. Young ancestor, I was just looking at the news. Chen Chen pointed to a place nearby. They're moving those boxes over there. Go over and help them now. Little Wang said helplessly, all right. Chen Chen swept her gaze around and found another person. She rudely addressed, Wu Yi, go and take charge of the workers. They're not doing anything at all. Wu Yi glanced to the corner, and sure enough, there were a few workers lounging around and smoking. He immediately went over. Stub out your cigarettes. Smoking is not allowed here. But Chen Chen still wasn't done. She called to a youth, Little Li. The youth rolled his eyes. Chen Chen said, Have you finished compiling the statistics Zhong Yi told you to do last week? That youth looked like he was both crying and laughing. 
he replied, I submitted it to Director Zhong on Monday. Chen Chen nodded her head like a little adult. Okay, you've done well. A female editor in her thirties jokingly asked her, little leader, I have completed all my tasks at hand. What should I do next? Chen Chen said, nothing, you may have a ten-minute rest. The female editor said, that's great, thank you little leader, he he. During these past few days, Zhong Yi had been bringing Chen Chen along to Central TV with him to work, and she began to become well acquainted with everyone on the program team. This little kid was really getting a kick out of being a leader, and from time to time, she would take charge and give some instruction. In the program team, Zhong Yi was known as the leader, while Chen Chen was affectionately known as the little leader. Zhong Yi walked up to her with a straight face. Leader. Director Zhong. Teacher Zhong. The people who were nearby greeted him when they saw him. Noticing the situation, Chen Chen also stopped ordering people around and slowly walked toward the audience seating. But before she could get away, Zhong Yi dragged her back. You little imp. Zhong Yi glared and said, why are you making trouble around here again? Chen Chen argued with reason, I was helping you supervise them. Zhong Yi said, who are you supervising? I've already warned you not to do so, yet here you are, getting a kick out of ordering people around, aren't you? Go. Go into my office and do your homework there. I'll take care of you later. Chen Chen smirked and walked away quite carefree. Zhong Yi barked at her as she walked off, I'll check on your homework in the afternoon, so you better do it well. A female director standing off to the side laughed, that kid is so cute. Oh, you think so? Zhong Yi was tickled. Even she can be considered cute? She drives people nuts. You might not know, but I feel my head will explode at any time. That kid's way of thinking and train of thought is completely different from normal kids. You never know what she's thinking. Chapter 657 The Unsellable Advertisements Countdown to Broadcast, 20 Days to the Broadcast of the Voice of China In the early morning, upon reaching his office, Zhong Yi did some calculations regarding the production timeline and felt that they were ahead of time, since all aspects of their preparation were already underway. In the coming days, they could officially start the program's recording. Except for an equipment order that had been delayed for a week or so, generally not much time was wasted and everything went according to plan. The construction of the stage was almost complete, the auditions held in other provinces were also wrapping up, while the contestants were busy rehearsing their performances and the coaches rehearsed their songs. The staff were also learning how to operate the new equipment. Everything was going smoothly. The only part with slow progress would probably be the case with the advertisers. Dong Dong. There was a knock on his door. Come in. Zhong Yi looked up. Little Wang pushed the door open and entered. Director Zhong, they're here. Zhong Yi acknowledged her and then stood up to welcome them. For people stepped in from outside. There were men and women in the group, ranging from their thirties to forties and dressed in suits and business attire. They were all advertisers' representatives or executives, and had come to discuss the advertising rights fee. Because a consensus could not be reached previously, Zhong Yi made an appointment with them to discuss it again. Teacher Zhong, we meet again. Secretary Li, please come in. Hello, Teacher Zhong. Director Xu, have a seat. Zhong Yi invited the four of them to take seats and had little Wang pour them some water. Then, he said to them, we're already counting down to the airing of the program. It's only 20 days away. Since the recording will certainly be done several days in advance, we don't have much time anymore. I urge every one of you to please reconsider. A woman from Plum Soy Milk Company said, your asking price is too high. Zhong Yi shook his head. To be honest, it's not an excessive asking price at all. An advertising rights fee of 3 million renminbi is totally incomparable to the 100 million title sponsorship from the Brain Gold Company. If we went by the usual ratio of the advertising rights fee to the title sponsorship fees, even if we asked for a 5 million renminbi advertising rights fee, it would not be too much. But based on the market situation, we deliberately took a step back and lowered it by almost half of the original asking price. Moreover, our program allocates very good placement for our advertisers, and will even repeatedly mention them immediately after we advertise for the title sponsors. 
For example, we promote our advertising partners in the host speech. After every advertisement break and also at the ending credits of the program, all of these are extremely good placements. The middle-aged man from Red and Blue Pharmaceuticals said, actually, a 100 million renminbi title sponsorship fee is not reasonable at all as it is way beyond the industry standards, and is likely going to be a bubble. Let me say this, teacher Jong. For other similar singing talent shows in the industry, the title sponsorship for a program is only around 10 to 20 million, while the highest advertising rights fee is only around 1 million. Some programs would even settle for 700,000 to 800,000, yet here you are, asking for an excess of 3 million and that the price is non-negotiable. We will not accept such a price. My best offer stands at 1.5 million. John Yi looked at him and said, if you want to compare us with the other programs, fine. We were able to invite Grandma Zhongxia to join us, can the other programs do the same? We have the Chen Guang couple joining us as well, are the other programs able to do that? We even have the Heavenly Queen Zhong Yuanji on board, what about the other programs? I'm not saying all this just for showing off. What I'm trying to say is we have spent a lot of money to invite for big shot coaches to join us, so we also have pressure on our expenditure. The four coaches are able to bring in a great deal of publicity and viewership ratings, so the advertising effects will be much greater. That is why our asking price for the advertising fee is also higher compared to the other programs. Another executive, this time from Hee Hee Dairy Industry, said, It's exactly because of this reason that we were willing to increase our offer. Teacher Jong, let me tell you this, no matter how much the other companies offer, the highest Hee Hee Dairy Industry is willing to offer stands at 1. 8 million renminbi. I have already drawn up the contract, so if you feel it's fine, we can sign the contract immediately. Zhong Yi waved it off. No way. The women from Plum Soy Milk Company said, Teacher Zhong, I heard that your program only managed to secure one advertiser to commit to the advertising rights. If you still insist on 3 million renminbi and not lower it, it will be very difficult to sell the rights. In the end, it will just be a waste of resources and you will incur the losses. The executive for Hee Hee Dairy Industry followed up, if you insist on 3 million renminbi, we certainly won't buy it. There isn't any other company that has the resources or desire to buy the first-tier advertising rights from you anyway. At most, they can only afford the second or third tier of ads. Thus, if some of the slots for the first-tier ads are left empty, won't that be a waste? If it can be lowered to 2 million renminbi or less, your program will immediately get a large amount of advertising fees injected, but if you insist on adhering to such an unreasonable price of 3 million, it will be difficult for us to continue the discussion. In the end, your program will miss out on nearly 10 million renminbi of first-tier advertising rights fees for nothing. Is that worth it? The other advertisers were also thinking the same. They were waiting for the Voices program team to cave in first and lower the asking price themselves. Otherwise, without too many days left until the program started its broadcast, even if the team wanted to sell the rights then, they couldn't do so and would end up as the biggest losers. However, Zhong Yi did not see it that way. These people were seemingly right, but were in fact just bullshitting. I'll stick to what I've said. The minimum price I can accept is 3 million. Our production costs are clear for all of you to see as well. The executive of Hee Hee Dairy Industry frowned. Let's go back to the basic points and talk from there. The voice has yet to start its broadcast, so no one knows how the viewership performance will be. Besides, from the evaluation of the public and media, it doesn't seem too optimistic. By purchasing the advertising rights, we are also taking a risk here with our expenditure. Teacher Jong, I'll take another step back, how about 2 million? All right, the highest offer we can make is 2 million. I'll discuss with the company about this. They somewhat should be able to accept it. At this moment, the two people who did not say much finally opened their mouths. Actually, the few of them had already communicated beforehand and discussed how they would handle this meeting. Actually, what Zhong Yi said was right. The Voice was the first variety program with a production cost of more than 100 million renminbi in the industry. With the inclusion of Zhong Yuanqi, Chen Guang, and other big time coaches, it could said that this was a really unprecedented setup. Even if many people and industry insiders were not feeling optimistic about it, they were still willing to purchase the voice's advertising rights. 
Because of this, they were able to accept double of the industry's average price of 1 million, offering the highest at 2 million renminbi. However, they could not accept a price that was three times the industry average. The four of them looked at Zhong Yi and waited for him to back down. Zhong Yi also looked at them, then picked up the desk phone and spoke on the intercom to the outside office, Hello, little Wang, come to my office for a moment. Yes, right now. Dong Dong. Little Wang knocked on the door and entered his office. Director Zhong. Zhong Yi bluntly said, Please help me escort our guests out. The four of them were stunned. Escort us out? Little Wang was taken aback, but then looked at the four of them and stated, Everyone, this way, please. One of them said, I advise you to reconsider. Another person said, No one will buy it for 3 million RMB. John Yi said, Please leave. Our fees are all clearly priced. Even if no one purchases them, we will stick to this price. Then forget it. Goodbye. Goodbye. When the four of them left, they felt a tinge of anger. How could you be so arrogant? For a lousy program like that, you might not even get 0.5% viewership ratings, so what makes you think that your advertising rights fee is worth 3 million renminbi? Only an idiot would buy it. Just wait and perish together with the ads at your own hands. When that time comes, you will be the ones making a huge loss. After they have left, Zhong Yi called Zhong Zhuo and Ha Chichi over. As the tasks they were responsible for were largely progressing well, they had managed to free up a lot of the time for themselves. Director Zhong, you were looking for us. Zhongs were asked. Ha Chichi blinked. I saw the advertisers leaving. Did we get more advertising fees already? Zhong Yi smiled and said, no, we didn't manage to seal the deal. They couldn't accept the price of the first-tier advertising rights fee and are not interested in the second and third-tier ads. Hachichi wondered, we didn't lower our asking price. It's still 3 million? Zhong Yi retorted, why should we lower our price? Hachichi. Zhong Yi said, for any future advertising contracts, the two of you will assist me in handling and discussing with any advertisers coming to talk about the advertising rights fee. The price of the first-tier advertising fee will be 3 million yuan and not a yuan less. We'll discuss with this price in mind, so if they don't accept it, so be it. Right now, he was exasperated by these advertisers and could not be, be bothered to talk with them any further. As such, he simply delegated this matter to Zhong Zui and Ha Chichi to handle. Ha Chichi said, to my knowledge, if we don't lower the price, it could become extremely difficult to sell. After all, the industry average for advertising fees, if they remained unsold, then our losses will. John Yi said, it's not that I don't want to sell the rights or lower the prices, but rather that they simply can't be reduced at all. We have already sold one of the first-tier advertising rights before this, and there's also the 100 million title sponsorship fee from Brain Gold Company. If we reduce the fees for the other companies, how will the company that purchased the advertising rights from us think? How will Brain Gold who had supported us in our most difficult times think of it? They had given us assistance when we were down but we are going to treat them like suckers. Jongs were nodded. That's very true. Ha Chichi sighed, but, if the ads are left empty, the losses we will incur. Zhong Yi said, we'll only lose two ads at most, so this is not a big deal at all. Moreover, I will tell you this. The ones who will suffer the loss is not us, it will be those for companies that'll regret later on. However, this is something that will only be revealed at a later time. Chapter 658, the broadcast of the program moved up ahead of time. On the same morning. One after another, several people tried persuading Zhong Yi. The first person to approach Zhong Yi was a staff member from a related department who was probably responsible for advertising. Sponsorship in Central TV. He said, Little Zhong, your asking price for the advertising fee has a serious problem and deviates far beyond what the market can bear. Many people have already come to us to reflect on the situation. Although the advertising sponsorship for your program is handled by you guys in the program team and not my department's responsibility, I still have to advise you. If those advertisers were already willing to settle for a higher than average amount, what more do you want? Right? Let's just secure those sponsorships first. It's better than ending up with nothing. No way. 
Little Jong. The price is already fixed. You. Why can't you be more flexible? Besides, even if your program team is not lacking any money, Central TV Department 1 lacks it. The voice will certainly make money, but the way to make money is not just limited to the sales of a few advertising rights. That is only a small amount of money while the big bucks will be earned in the future. If we make those previous advertisers who have already signed with us feel disappointed because of this small amount of money, then we will lose our reputation and a lot of chances at money. Wouldn't that end up making us lose more than we gain? Please give it some consideration. There's no need to consider it further, Chief Jew. Please return. One after another, people came to persuade Zhong Yi. Nobody knew who told them to come. Maybe it was Central TV Department 1's Deputy Director Jiang Yuan. Or the other leaders from Central TV Department 1? Could it even be the station head of Central TV? Finally, the executive producer of the program team, Fu Sihong also came to Zhong Yi's office. He pushed the door open and entered. Little Zhong, the boss of Hee Hee Dairy Industry has worked with Central TV before. I also know him personally. Why don't you just reduce the asking price to 2 million and sell them the advertising rights they want? As for the other company that have already signed, they won't know our agreed upon price with the other companies. We can keep the information confidential within our internal department and the details of the contract won't be made public. If that doesn't work, we can also give them a slight compensation by placing that company which spent 3 million ahead of the other companies or handle it some other way. Zhong Yi retorted, just a slight difference with the appearance order and it can have a difference of a third of the advertising fee. Fu Sihong said, let me tell you this, every program does it like that. It's not possible that every advertiser will buy an advertising spot for the same price. There are definitely going to be some fluctuations. Zhong Yi replied, I don't care how others do it, I only care about what I do. Since I have already set a uniform asking fee for everyone, then that is the fixed price. Little Zhong. Fu Sihong became slightly angry. Zhong Yi gave a wave of his hand. Don't say any more, Brother Fu. I will not agree with this way of handling the issue. In the end, even Fu Sihong was rejected as he left with a blackened face. Fu Sihong was just the executive producer of The Voice in Name and was sent by Central TV Department 1 to supervise this program, and had very high authority. If Zhong Yi was still the newcomer at the beginning, it would be uncertain who would be the final decision maker for the asking price of the advertising rights fee. After all Zhong Yi was still a newcomer when it came to Central TV. But in all these days of the pre-production work for The Voice, from the program planning to the setting up of the stage to the invitation of the coaches to the securing of the title sponsor, and even to the picking of contestants, all of these were handled by Zhong Yi alone. Fu Sihong did not even help much and could not be seen around at the program team office either. Perhaps he had other, more important work at the other departments, but because of that, faced with the current advertising rights fee issue, it could be said that Zhong Yi was already in full control of the situation. Of course he did not need to give in to anyone over this. Regarding how the pricing was set or what rules to enforce, he had the final say. As this was a program he had poured his blood and sweat into to create, people who were outsiders or did not help out much in the production usually, even disappearing when they were facing difficult times, were not going to have any influence over the decisions. Now that they heard that there was a lot of money involved, did they think they could just come here and dictate right and wrong? Bullshit. They only knew how to make trouble. Zhong Yi was not in the mood to argue over such pointless issues with them. To be honest, he was not concerned about such a small amount of money. To him, if he had the time, he would rather go out onto the streets to canvas for some contestants with nice voices than waste time arguing with Fu Sihong over those advertisers. To get some peace, he decided it would be better for him to go downstairs to the recording studio. After supervising the work for a while, he found a quiet place to write down delegations for the next tasks. For example, the template of the recording for the contestants' video clips and the voices program logo, etc. Some of the tasks progressed smoothly. On the matter of the advertising rights fee, it was really just a small bump and essentially harmless. But then, just when everyone in the Voices program team was busily making preparations for the program to be broadcast 20 days later, bad news arrived without any warning. 
Zhong Yi was the first person in the program team to learn of the news. Then, one after another, Ha Chichi, Zhong Zui, Wu Yi, Little Wang, and the rest also received this stunning notice. The Voice's broadcast schedule was going to be moved up ahead of time. The new time for broadcast had been set for next Thursday. Upon hearing that, everyone was dumbfounded. By next Thursday? Our studio's layout has not even been fully completed yet. At a floor of Central TV Department 1's offices. In the Deputy Director's office. Zhong Yi was a little shocked. Director Jiang, what's the meaning of all this? Jiang Yuan was looking very depressed as this matter had also caught him off guard. Can you start the recording of the program by this week? We must broadcast the program on time by next Thursday. Zhong Yi didn't know what to say but still replied, when I took over this program, the production time was set for one and half months to around two months. But now, after only half a month, you're telling me we have to start broadcasting? If it was brought forward by three days, I wouldn't have said anything. If it was a week, I would also accept it. But moving it forward by nearly a month? We haven't even finished preparing much yet, so how are we going to be able to broadcast anything? Jiang Yuan said, we've also just received the news. The program you were supposed to replace still had about a month before they would finish initially. Counting everything, there were still going to be four or five episodes of recording for that program, and the plan was for you guys to take over the slot when their program ended. But right now, there are some problems that have surfaced. The host of that program, Zhao Yuzhuang, has had something happen in his private life. You will understand once you check the internet, but for now, Central TV has decided to temporarily suspend him and take him off television for at least a year. News? Private life? Zhong Yi took out his cell phone and browsed through several pages before he found it. A selfie showed a woman dressed in a bathrobe and laying in bed. Beside her, Central TV host Zhao Yuzhuang was sound asleep and did not know anything about his picture being taken. His lower body was covered with a blanket but his upper body was naked and the woman was obviously not Zhao Yuzhuang's wife. Zhong Yi immediately understood. Although these photos could not fully depict what was going on and could have been real or a setup, but as a host of Central TV, with such unglamorous pictures exposed in the media, there would usually be adverse effects. If it were other television stations, they might have tolerated this, but Central TV was definitely less forgiving. No matter how much money a host earned or how high their viewership ratings were, it was all secondary in Central TV. What Central TV emphasized most was political effects. John Yi put down his cell phone. Can you schedule another program to fill the vacancy? There's no other choice. Jiang Yuan said, recently in Department 1, only the voice is slated to replace another program's time slot, so there's no one else who can take over. It will be too late even if we made a last-minute effort to produce a program to try to gloss over this situation. Zhong Yi said, but we also can't make it in time. Well-meaning, Jiang Yuan said, you all have already been preparing for half a month now and I know that time is very tight. I also know that no one has ever managed to prepare and produce such a large-scale singing talent show in half a month, but there is no other choice. Whether the program is fully prepared or half prepared, even if it has an incomplete stage or no contestants, we have no choice but to put it out and give it a try. The time is too tight. Our stage, the contestants' rehearsals, the video clips, the program's publicity shorts, and a series of other things all aren't completed yet. Zhong Yi said. Half a month? Even a month's time was insufficient. Like the voice from Zhong Yi's previous world, from the preparations to production to finally getting broadcast, all of that would take about six months or even longer. Zhong Yi had directly pulled the voice in its entirety from his previous world and that helped him save the time for planning and conceptualization, and allowed him to speed up the production timeline for the program. But that was as far as it went, since the time needed for stage setup, production of the publicity shorts, and selection of contestants couldn't be skimped on at all. There was no way it could be saved. Jiang Yuan said, I know all about your difficulties, but this is the situation we're in right now, so no matter what, you all have to do it. Little Zhong, what others can't do, I believe you can. You are a legend in the industry and anyone would give you the thumbs up if you get mentioned. You certainly can do it. I have faith in you and confidence in your team. 
Whoa. Don't try to suck up to me when there's a situation like this. Previously, didn't you mention that my temper was bad? Yet you're now giving me the thumbs up? Zhang Yi repeatedly emphasized, it's too difficult, this is too difficult. Jiang Yuan stared at him and said, right now, all the station and I want is one word from you. Can the voices program team fill the vacancy? Zhang Yi kept quiet. Jiang Yuan said, we will provide anything you need, including equipment, manpower, even central TV department ones and other channels resources. As long as you ask, I will help you to get it even if it means that I have to plead with the others. Oh right, about the advertising resources that we previously allocated 75 seconds of free publicity airtime to you all. After the meeting regarding Zhao Yuzhuang just now, the station also mentioned that if necessary, we can still allocate another 75 seconds of airtime to you all as compensation. You don't need to worry about where we will get this advertising airtime from, we'll arrange it for you. You only need to submit the publicity clips and give us a time and date for when you want them to be aired. What do you think? John Yi. Jiang Yuan said, regarding the station's request for your program's viewership ratings, they are also willing to lower their expectations. So long as it hits 0.7%, that will be enough. When we broadcast a hastily made production, we understand that the viewership ratings will certainly be affected as well. We have already considered such situations knowing that we have no choice but to rush it out for broadcast. John Yi realized that Central TV had no other way out. They couldn't even give his team another day for preparations. No one could have expected such a situation to happen all of a sudden, so matter how he considered what was happening, there really wasn't anything John Yi could say to this, could he? He could only clench his teeth and agree, okay, but I can only say that I will try my best. However, Jiang Yuan said, I don't want to hear that, what I want to hear is a firm answer. Can you do it or not? John Yi contemplated for a long time before finally committing. Yes. Although he hesitated for a long time, the moment he said, yes, he did so with determination. Jiang Yuan said loudly, good, that was what I wanted to hear from you. When he left Jiang Yuan's office, Zhang Yi knew that this truly was an unforeseen disaster. The preparations were making good progress and all aspects of the production were going smoothly as well, but somehow, an incident like this happened. But Zhang Yi was not planning to give up yet, otherwise he would not have agreed. Since he agreed, he would certainly have to do it. By next Thursday? Only six days left? Zhang Yi was counting the time he had left, going through every detail in his mind and thinking which part of the production could be sped up or which tasks would need more manpower and overtime. As for cutting corners? Zhang Yi never even gave this a thought. The voice must never have any discounts, this was Zhang Yi's principle and also his bottom line. Chapter 659 A Bold Decision At another place. In the program team office of The Voice. Executive producer Fu Sihong was not around but everyone else had already returned to the office from the main recording studio. Without definitive knowledge of the current situation, some were anxious, some were angry and some were feeling depressed. Everyone was talking about the news they heard about from the station as they waited for Zhong Yi to return from the leader's office. Is the rumor true? I'm afraid it is. Yeah, the news has already reported on it. Old Zhao's photos have also been released. So what are we going to do now? How are we supposed to handle this? It's impossible to bring the broadcast up to next Thursday. Yeah, we won't even be able to get it ready in time for broadcast in two weeks, let alone next week. Ari, Director Zhong is back, he's back. With that heads up, everyone did not wait for Zhong Yi to step into the office and headed straight for the door instead, surrounding Zhong Yi as he was about to come into the office. Ha Chichi anxiously asked, Director Zhong, what did the leader say? Zhong Zui, who was sweating in anxiety, asked, they can't really be asking us to rush the broadcast out by next week, can they? Director Zhong, you have to speak with the leader. Little Wang was also getting very anxious. Zhong Yi looked at everyone. Let me go inside first. And close the door, we'll discuss this among ourselves. Outside, there were already quite a number of staff from the other program teams of Central TV Department 1 looking at them clearly having heard about the news of the voice being brought forward for an early broadcast. Inside. 
the office door closed. Zhang Yi caught his breath before telling everyone, I've just returned from Director Jiang's office. The station's meaning is for us to bring our broadcast forward to next Thursday and they have already decided. There's no chance of changing their decision at all, but there's a reason for this of course. Right now, we're the only ones who can fill the slot. We have no choice other than to do as we're told. Ha Chichi said, but. Zhang Yi interrupted, the station will also compensate us with an additional 75 seconds of promotional airtime, together with additional personnel to make up for the manpower our team lacks. We will also get a free pass to do anything we want and everything will be given the green light, giving us the advantage of convenience now. I understand that everyone is quite opposed to this, me included. I also wish that they would give us another month or two to work on this program that we have been preparing for half a month to perfection, but there's no one or two months anymore. Right now, time is not on our side and the circumstances are placed before us, so no matter how opposed to it we are, it won't help the situation at all. Everyone was silent. Ari, yes, the situation has been set in stone, so what else could they do about it? Could they possibly refuse to adhere to the orders? That was surely out of the question. Zhang Yi said, just now, I expressed my stand to the boss. Regarding this situation and the mission we've been given, we must complete it. Not, not only that, but we must also complete it beautifully. Doesn't everyone else think we can't do it? Then we must surely do it to prove to them what we're capable of. Show them the fighting spirit of the Voices program team. Zhongs were asked, but how should we do it? Wu Yi said, there's definitely no enough time. Zhong Yi spat out two words, work overtime. Everyone looked at each other. Only to hear Zhong Yi add, I will take the lead on this. From today until next Thursday, I will live in the office. No matter what happens on set, I will be the first to get there to give instructions. I will also share a load of the work that every one of you have on hand, so please look for me at any time. Ah? You want to live here? For six days. Everyone was stunned. Seeing this, Ha Chichi also bit the bullet and expressed her stand as well. If the executive director was willing to go this far, then what reason did she have to to grumble? She said, since Director Zhang has already put it this way, then I have no reason to not fight alongside with him. I don't know whether the program will be produced and made ready for broadcast on time, but at least I'll know that I tried my best to make it work. Since I don't have much to do at home for the next few days, I don't mind going home late. I will come to the office early and work until 11 p.m. at night. Other than sleep, I will be spending most my time in the office. Everyone, let's do this together. Seeing the situation, Zhongs were also said, I have no problems with that, even if I have to work till midnight, I should be able to take it. Little Wang said, I, I can work until 9 p.m. Wu Yi said, I am fine with working until 11 p.m. A female editor said, I won't be able to work overtime at night, but I can come in early at 5 a.m. every day. It's only for six days anyway, so let's do this. Count me in. And me too. Me three. It's just overtime anyway. We've already poured so much sweat and blood into this program, we can't just let it go to waste like that. Right, it's not like we've never worked overtime before in the past. Let's do it. With someone leading the way, everyone responded. Seeing that, Zhong Yi felt very pleased. He said, thank you, everyone. I promise all of you that our efforts will not go to waste. When the program starts broadcasting, the market and the audience will certainly give us their approval. Our difficult situation now is the last hurdle as we sprint towards success. It's the final obstacle between us and the fruits of victory. As soon as we can get over it, victory will belong to us. By that time, the harvest will reap and our growth of experience will definitely be many more times than before. But right now, we need to finish this task that looks insurmountable to everyone else. We mustn't lose faith before we even begin giving our all. Right. Director Jong is correct. We will surely get it done. That's right. Who says that we won't be able to do it? We have Director Jong leading us. So we'll surely be able to create a miracle. Well said. Everyone responded loudly in turn, their morale boosted by Jong Yi's words. 
Zhong Yi did not let up and said, beginning now, I will start with the stage setup job. Sister Chi, you'll have to arrange for the clips of the contestants to be recorded today. Shoot a few more angles and interviews, especially for those seeded contestants. Keep me updated on this as we go along. I will also be following up with you on the progress and helping out as necessary. The deadline for that will be two days later. As for the contestants, I want to go through every one of them once more. If there's not enough manpower, tell me. Let me know what people and how many you need, then I will go and request them from the station. Ha Chichi replied immediately, understood. Zhong Yi said, Brother Zhong. Zhongs were said, please give me your instructions. Zhong Yi looked at him and said, we cannot afford to delay any more on the stage construction. Get them to work on it through the night. Give the workers more money, but I want it done before Monday. The equipment testing also has to be completed before Tuesday. Zhongs were drew in a deep breath. The stage can be finished if we work overtime on it, but for the equipment, as they are all the highest end available in the industry and many of our staff are using it for just the first time, we're still learning about it. There's even two sets of equipment that we have not finished adjusting and are getting outside advice on how to deal with them. Regarding that, I really am unable to do much or guarantee anything. If it's fast, maybe we need just three to four days, but if there's a delay, it might even take up to a week without getting fixed, that. Zhong Yi said, I want it settled Wednesday by the latest. When Ha Chichi heard that, she asked in surprise, then when will we start studio recording? The broadcast is slated for Thursday night, don't you know? Everyone did not expect that Zhong Yi would push for everything to be ready by Wednesday, because then, how would the studio recording be done? Actually, Zhong Yi had already thought of it. This was also one of the boldest decisions he had ever made. To give them all the longest duration to finish with their preparation work, he surprised everyone when he explained, the program, we will record it on Thursday itself. We will finish the recording before 6pm, then edit and do the post-production, adding captions and getting it approved. Then at 9pm sharp, we will go ahead with our broadcast. We can definitely meet that deadline. That caused an uproar. Record it on the day of? Broadcasting almost immediately after recording? That was way too hasty. If they did it that way, then wasn't it basically no different from a live broadcast? What if a situation occurred during the recording? What if a problem happened during the editing and post-production stage? If anything even went wrong at any stage, they would not be able to meet the evening deadline for the broadcast. This was as good as tempting fate. At this moment, they all knew just how bold Zhong Yi could get. Everyone was at a loss of words at this, yet they had no choice but to admit that having been forced into a corner, if they wanted to rush the program out for broadcast, this was the only way left. Chapter 660 Blue Collar Worker Zhong Yi At night. Around 9 p.m. Other than those working overtime or those doing night recording, everyone in the television tower had already gone home. The offices on the different floors had already turned off their lights, as more than half of the tower was empty. However, the Voices Program team office and recording studio were still brightly lighted, with many people streaming in and out. There were sounds of construction and equipment being moved, while some people were also discussing work with urgency. There were even the loud shouts of some managers, repeating their orders to the workers. Put that here. Okay, Sister Chi. Over there, hurry up. We have to get the lights installed before 11 p.m. Director Zhong, we will definitely get the lights up before tomorrow afternoon, we still have other tasks to handle tomorrow afternoon. If we can save some time here today, we must do so. I want it done by 11 p.m. at the latest. At 11 p.m., I will come and check the results. Okay, we'll try our best. It's hard on you all, I know that. After we're done with tonight's tasks, supper's on me. At this moment, a female editor came over looking very tired. She waved her cell phone at Zhong Yi and said, Director Zhong, um, my husband is nagging at me again, so for today. Zhong Yi replied, go home quickly then. The female editor said, OK, I will be here early tomorrow. Be careful going back, Zhong Yi said with concern. The female editor turned around and saw little Chen Chen sitting sleepily in the audience seating in the recording studio and said to Zhong Yi, 
I drove here today, why don't I help you send Chen Chen back? Only then did Zhong Yi remember Chen Chen. Oh. It won't inconvenience you? It's fine, the female editor replied. So Zhong Yi asked Chen Chen, shall I get Auntie Yi to send you home? Chen Chen looked at him. Are you going back too? Zhong Yi said, I can't leave yet. I have to live here in the office for the next few days. Chen Chen grunted. Then I will also stay. Zhong Yi said, what are you saying? There's no suitable place here for you to sleep at all. I'll get someone to take you back. If you're afraid of being at home alone, why don't I call my parents and inform them? You can go over to stay for today or I can get them to take care of you for the next two days. Chen Chen did not say a word. Chen Chen, I'm talking to you, Zhong Yi said. Chen Chen ignored him and continued doing her own thing. Zhong Yi was helpless at this and could only say to the female editor, you go home first. Since she doesn't want to leave, I'll have to let her stay here with me. There's no other way around it. The female editor suggested, there's a big sofa behind the makeup and rest area. There are also pillows and blankets upstairs. Although the conditions are not too good, it's still fine to sleep in. Okay, thanks, Zhong Yi said. Turning around, Zhong Yi reverted his attention back to his work. Not only was he taking control of the overall situation by giving out instructions to everyone, he also involved himself in the details of the tasks. He was helping out wherever he could, even to the point of climbing up the ladder to handle the lighting setup. He was even oblivious to the fact that he had dirted himself from head to toe while doing so. When an executive director like Zhong Yi got down to this state, seeing this, the workers also spared no effort and put more strength into their work. No one lazed around and some of the workers who had initially intended to leave at 10 p.m. did not feel it was right to simply leave now, they just held back their tiredness and worked on. If the leader did not complain about being tired, how could they have anything to complain about? At around 10.30 p.m., Chen Chen could not stay awake any longer. Her eyelids drooped down heavily as her body swayed left and right as she walked toward Zhong Yi's side. Zhong Yi, I'm sleepy, take me to bed. Zhong Yi did not even turn around. Little Zhao, help me bring Chen Chen to the rest area. Ari, coming. Little Zhao set down what he was working on and hurried over. He said kindly, Chen Chen, let's go. Chen Chen glanced at Little Zhao and then laid her eyes back on Zhong Yi and pushed him on the back. Zhong Yi, you take me, you have to sleep too. Zhong Yi said, how can I sleep? It's almost the deadline and I'm already planning to work continuously for the next few days. Just be good and let Uncle Little Zhao get you a blanket, then go to sleep. Chen Chen yelled, Zhong Yi, Zhong Yi. Zhong Yi ignored her as the installed lighting seemed to have a problem. He rushed up and asked, what happened? Wasn't it checked before the installation was done? Chen Chen got angry. Little Zhao looked at her and said, there have been some changes recently and Director Zhong is the most anxious out of everyone on the program team. His has the most pressure on him and all he is thinking of now is how to get the voice broadcast smoothly without any incident. So why don't we not give Director Zhong any trouble, otherwise he'll be even more tired. Though he was unsure if Chen Chen understood that, she still slowly walked away with little Zhao. Just before she left the recording studio, she turned her head suddenly and said loudly, Zhong Yi, you come and sleep soon as well. Zhong Yi acknowledged, all right, all right. Only then did Chen Chen finally leave the recording studio. However, once he became busy again, he worked until 12 a.m. After they ordered and finished their supper, all the workers left. More than half of the staff also returned home. Only three to five members of the program team staff stayed with Zhong Yi to continue working. They were all the younger male staff members and physically fitter, while another female staff member did not want to leave either, saying that she wanted to stay and continue working. However, seeing that it was already very late, he still made her go back, thinking that it wouldn't be safe if she went back any later than that. Director Zhong, let's continue. Can you all still take it? Yes. I can still take it. I'm fine too, I don't usually sleep until much later than this. Okay, we only have a little more to finish up for today's tasks. Let's get it done quickly so that you all can go home and rest well. Another round of work began once more for them. 
Moreover, the effort needed to work after midnight was much greater compared to normal working hours in the daytime. Even though the workload was more or less the same, during daytime they were in a better state of mind and had plenty of rest beforehand, so they could easily complete their tasks. However, after midnight, they were in an entirely different state of mind and fatigued after working more than 10 hours. Coupled with the feeling of sleepiness, their efficiency rapidly declined as well. They only managed to stay awake with great perseverance and physical strength. 10 minutes. Half an hour. Suddenly, a small figure appeared from the rear, swaying unsteadily and walking toward them. It was Chen Chen. She was wrapped in a thin blanket and found Zhong Yi in her half-asleep state. Her eyes could barely stay open and it was only through the slits of her eyes that she saw him. She then plopped herself heavily onto the coach's chair closest to her. She adjusted herself in the seat a little and covered herself with the blanket before dozing off again, breathing quietly through her mouth. Zhong Yi did not notice her. But a few of the staff members discovered her in the chair a moment later. Ah! Director Zhong, Chen Chen is here. Zhong Yi turned his head around and saw her. Huh, why did you come out here? The place is such a mess and you're sleeping here? Hurry up and go back into the rest area to sleep. Chen Chen was woken by this and opened her eyes, only to glance at him for a moment before shutting them and falling back asleep. Zhong Yi quickly went over and tugged at her. Go, go, go. Be good and listen. If you're disobedient, I will get angry. Chen Chen lay sprawled out on the chair and mumbled a few sleepy words. But as to what she was saying, no one could make out a word. Zhong Yi was left with no choice and could only tell the staff, I guess that's it for today. We're almost done anyway, thank you for the hard work. Now go back home and sleep well. All all right then. Then we'll be going. Director Zhong, you rest early too. The several of them were indeed feeling dead tired and knew that it was time for them to go home as well. Zhong Yi poked Chen Chen. Come, let's go to sleep. Chen Chen whined but did not move. Zhong Yi could only helplessly bend over to pick her up. A child seven or eight years old was already considered somewhat heavy. Zhong Yi could not single-handedly carry her like the landlady did and could only hold her with two hands carrying her to the rest area and putting her back onto the big sofa. Go to sleep, Zhong Yi whispered. Without needing him to say so, Chen Chen was already fast asleep. Zhong Yi pulled the blanket over her but did not leave. He knew that Chen Chen could not sleep well if she was alone and needed someone beside her. He was afraid that if Chen Chen didn't fall into a deep sleep, she would go out looking for him again. So he laid down beside her and closed his eyes for a nap, but not fully falling asleep. After about 20 minutes, he sat up and studied Chen Chen before carefully getting off the sofa and returning to the recording studio to work. Come. It's time to continue. He was the only person left in the huge recording studio, so Zhong Yi went over to the control room to test out some of the equipment he had knowledge on, for instance the hanging ceiling microphones he had requested. Then, item by item, he finally got to testing the lighting rig, tinkering with the movement controls. Next, he began to fiddle around on the computer and printed several hundred audience admission passes as well as making the contestant passes. Then he created a short publicity video explaining the competition's rules for the program. Due to his experience from making advertisements, such tasks were not difficult at all for him and he could do it by himself even if no one was helping him, although it took much more time doing it alone. On top of that, he also did the voiceover for the video explaining the competition's rules. Time was ticking away. Zhong Yi was so absorbed in his work that he had long since forgotten all about the time. He now regarded himself as a blue-collar worker and ordered himself around as such. Titles of program executive director or famous host were all useless at this point in time. All he wanted to do right now was ensure that the quality of the voice would still be retained even if he had to rush it out before the deadline. Other than that, everything else was pointless and in vain. He went all out. It was a race against time. Can support us completed novel house in link below clip. Thank you for coming and love the sharing story.